Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Ms. Saunders? Here. Ms. Sauzel? Here. All right. Please note that for the record that Ms. Hendrickson and Mr. DuPerry are voting members this evening. And we have uh, next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from February 21st, 2017. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Here. All right, item four, the Rock Church requests a sketch plan review for 66 Gorham Road, Assessor's Map R58, Lot 19. Can you please state your name for the record? Uh, Would you like me to turn it over again? Look at that. We'll have Jay and give a little summation before we invite the applicant. Sure, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this item is before you for a sketch plan review for an ex uh, expansion proposal of the Rock Church at 66 Gorham Road. Um, just as a reminder, a sketch plan is a, it's an informal application process, an opportunity for the applicant to provide an overview of their project, um, give the board you know, a conceptual layout and their thoughts, and then for the board to provide guidance and consideration uh, for the applicant to think about as they prepare uh, for a formal site plan uh, application. Uh, the Rock Church is in the R4 district, which does allow a place of worship, so it is a permitted use. Uh, the property is near the Oak Hill Commercial District in the municipal campus um, and surrounded by a few uh, multifamily developments. Uh, you'll have received staff comments, and really the principal item that we flagged was um, around coordination of the project proposal and the town's Gorham Road Improvement Project. Um, it's a project that the town has been, um, has, has a capital improvement plan in place for and has uh, had some plans publicly vetted and is actually slated to begin the first phase of construction this summer. And so just want to be sure we're coordinating well in terms of uh, parking, uh, as, as folks probably are aware. Currently, there's pretty wide shoulders on Gorham Road that are utilized uh, for parking during uh, the church is doing you know, a, a good service and have a lot of people attending, which is wonderful, um, but also has those impacts, so we just need to be mindful of that. Um, there's also been discussion uh, staff has had around uh, their traffic engineers done some preliminary plans and a discussion about the potential triggers for a left-hand turn lane and really understanding the timing of that, how that works with this um, corridor. Um, and so I guess those would be the sort of principal elements that we want to flag. Um, and and certainly I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. If you have to Thank offer you, any more we can. Appreciate it. Uh, and for the applicant, could you just state your name and sure. give us? My name is Tom Greer from Pickham and Greer. I'm the civil engineer on the project. Uh, with me tonight is Chris Wilson, a member of the church. Uh, Pastor Eric Samuelson had hoped to be here, but he's in route from Boston and not, not able to make it. Uh, he did want to pass along that um, this is a very important project to the church and uh, we're looking to make this go as smoothly as possible and coordinating with the town on items that were pointed out in the staff memo is certainly on the list of things that, that we'll be doing. Um, what I wanted to do was walk you through the uh, existing site, which is what I have up on the, on the board here. Um, what we're looking at is uh, Route 114 in this area in here. This is the existing church. We were back before the church, uh, before this board, uh, several years ago and added some parking in the back so that we now have 125 spaces for the, for the um, 250 seats that we have. That's roughly uh, one parking space for every two seats, which is double the amount that the ordinance requires. And we're finding that, that even with that, we're going to multiple services on Sunday in order to make sure that we have enough parking spaces for each one of the services. Um, we do have some parking that does occur out on 14. Uh, some of that is generated as a result of um, people parking out there to make sure uh, other parishioners have parking spots up by the church, either elderly or ones for children and that type of thing. So even though we may be parking on the street, there may actually be some empty spaces around it. And we realize with the new plan and the new redevelopment of Route 114, uh, that's not going to be possible. And I think we have a plan to, to work with that. 
Um, the site is surrounded uh, by residential housing. There are multifamily housings on, on three sides here. Uh, these are fairly open. Uh, we do have a little bit of buffering and some trees along the edge here. And obviously there is a little bit of buffering and edging along here. We do have some on site to provide existing buffering, but that gives you an idea of where we are. We're going to continue to do that. We've been working with Tony Mench, landscape architect, and I'll show you the landscape plan that, that's in the works. Um, this project not only requires planning board approval, but it also requires uh, main DEP approval for a stormwater permit. So we'll be going through that process as well. And it will also require a traffic movement permit from MDOT. Bill Bray is working on that. And as Jay pointed out, uh, when you look at the numbers of cars that come in and out on Sunday, uh, a left-hand turn lane out here on 114 may be possible. Um, we're hoping that that's not the case. Um, if you look at our peak traffic demand, it's on Sunday morning. Uh, we plan on having two services on Sunday morning. Uh, it's a very limited time frame that that occurs, uh, but we're going to let Bill Bray work with MDOT and work through those numbers and whatever they decide on, obviously, we'll have to, have to live with. And if necessary, we'll coordinate with um, Angela and work through the, the left-hand turn lane with the expansion of uh, the changes of, of Route 114. So we're, we're pretty comfortable with where we are. Um, we have talked to the owner who owns all the property around us, and he's in favor of the project. Uh, he does need to see a landscape plan, uh, but that will be in the works as well. This is the current site plan. It's a little bit larger than the last one. You can still see the residential houses just on the very edges that, that you see around us. Um, we are going to continue with the same traffic pattern, which is one way generally in on, on this side as you loop around and go on the outside. What we're looking to do is add a relatively large building here on the front um, that will be, we'll, we'll seat 600 um, people and have a stage and uh, podium, that type of thing, as you would expect in the, in the uh, church. Uh, the back half of the church gets renovated and will continue to be uh, available for um, small classes, teachings, uh, community gatherings, those type of things that you would expect the church to do. Because of the number of, of church um, people where we fit into the community and want to be a community asset. And their long-term goal is that if their facilities will fit some other civics uh, organization's needs, then they'll be available for that. And we hope to, hope to make that connection really strong and, and be able to continue to grow. Um, we have put in uh, a landscape plan. There are existing trees along here. and We continue to fill that in with some smaller trees. There are some larger trees that are going to go in and back around. And this side especially gets a, gets a fair amount of trees. This requires a 15-foot grading and, and landscape easement from uh, Steve Berg, the owner of that property. Uh, he's, he, at, at several meetings, he said that that's, that's uh, in the works. Uh, all we need to do is provide him the landscape plan. We now have that, and, and we're ready to work back through uh, those issues with him. Uh, we did provide a um, concept plan in the... Uh, uh, application to the board where we put a line around the outside piece of the parking lot and calculated the percentage of landscaping and how we uh, put that together inside the parking. Uh, with that, we're about 18% and we just wanted to confirm with the board that, that what we've presented to you is, is adequate to meet the ordinance, which is 15% and how we've calculated it. So that's, that's where we stand with that. We will have large trees. One of the big pieces that we're looking to do is to put sidewalks that start here at the back that will come all the way down on each side of the, of the church and have the main entrances on each side of the church that you come into both sides. So we think pedestrian access from the parking field to the, to the church itself is going to be improved with those, with those sidewalks as we work our way through. Um, we do have uh, 255 spaces. Uh, that's actually 2.35 spaces for each two point. It's it's one space for every 2.35 seats. Get that backwards. I want to reverse it. 
Um, so we think we're, we're in the ballpark with that and that, that that's, that's doable. Um, we do have a small piece of grass in the back here where we could expand or, um, as Jay pointed out, this is the underneath soil filter in the back. We could put that on the ground. We'd prefer not to do that. We think it's a, that in terms of, of how the church sits in with the neighbors, that, that leaving some green space between here and our neighbors here is, is really where we'd like to be. These are the, uh, these are relatively close. Uh, these are a little bit closer over here, but we think that's a, that's a valuable asset for the, for the overall church. Um, we will have um, an underdrain soil filter here in the front and another one in this location. Uh, in order to meet main DEP standards, we need to collect and treat 95% of the runoff from the paved area that we're, we're dealing with, as well as meet peak flow controls. Uh, that's a fairly high standard for us to meet, uh, but I think we can do that with, with these three basements as we go through that process. Um, we do have uh, underground sewer connection here, as well as a water connection in the front, so this building will be sprinkled. We'll have town sewer. Uh, Jay recommended we get together with the sewer department to make sure they have capacity. We'll be happy to do that. Um, the power now comes in overhead to a pole here and across, and it's all overhead. Uh, it was suggested by staff that, it, that that be put underground. Uh, we, we can do that. Um, it, it's a little bit tricky, but, but we, can, we can make that happen if that's the wish of the town. Uh, again, we're, we're, we want to make sure this goes as smoothly as possible, and if that's what it takes, then, then we'll certainly do that. This plan that I'm showing you actually coordinates with the town's uh, improvement plan for Route 114. Um, 114 in this area gets pushed over so that, that it, what you can see here is that we've shaded the <laughs> gray is where it ends up. Uh, this car here is actually in the existing travel lane. So you can see that the existing travel lane that comes through here on, on this side of the road actually goes away and becomes part of the uh, stormwater treatment system in the landscaped area along, along uh, Route 114. Uh, and this gray area here is where the new sidewalk will be. And it's uh, 10 feet wide, which is which is fairly healthy to make sure that it can be uh, very pedestrian friendly and uh, easily maintained with, with fog trucks and that type of thing. So we would anticipate that that would be available uh, year round, uh, that it's not a sidewalk that's far enough out that gets forgotten. We think that's, that's a great, great concept for the town to push forward with. But we will have a little bit extra green. It does push the building a little, uh, the road a little further away from our building, uh, which we think is, is fine as well. We are right at the front setback line, so our, our building will be a very prominent feature along, along Route 114. I have some preliminary elevation views of the, of the front of the building. Um, because of the overall nature and the size of it, um, it, it does end up with a flat roof in the front. Uh, it, a building that size with a pitched roof is really very awkward um, and, it's, and it's very hard to detail. Uh, we are looking for a stone uh, veneer on the front corner, hence the rock church is a symbolic of that, that piece here. Uh, and then there's some additional siding. These are preliminary in nature. Uh, the architect has been working with them and we'll be getting together with staff to see if we can do uh, a little more uh, fenestration on the, on the very front elevation and make that a, a little bit softer. What we did want to show is a little different perspective view of the front. Um, the the uh, elevation view, the perspective in your package has a landscape plan with it. We didn't want you to uh, misunderstand where we were with the landscape. Uh, because of the underdrain soil filter across the front, the landscaping is a little different than what we show. Uh, we, we plan on using uh, a number of large deciduous trees going across the front. There will be a couple more on the other side of the driveway. Uh, they step back away from the, from the building and we can put them along the back of the sidewalk where we have uh, an earthen berm for, the, for that. 
We then have the underdrain soil filter in the middle. That's harder to plant those large trees and the evergreens that are there. So we've put smaller shrubs along the edges of the corner, uh, some ornamental grass in the middle, and again, another, another piece to offset the, the, the building itself. Um, we like this because when you walk along uh, the sidewalk or you're driving in the car, you look underneath the, the canopy to see the, the, the side of the building, and you think that will make it, make it prominent enough that you know where you're going. It will give you the landmark as, it, as, as where it is. Uh, there are some pretty fancy features with glass walls on the side and the back, as you can see on the elevation views. This is a, an evolving plan. so. Um, my understanding is the town was looking for some windows potentially, even if they were false windows along the front, just to give it a more open feel to the, to the sidewalk as we work our way through. Um, with that, Mr. Chairman, I think I've hit a lot of the uh, high points, and we'd be happy to take comments from the board, anything you can give us to guide us in the right direction so that when we come back the next time, everybody raises a hand at the right time would be terrific. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll start <coughs> from Rick. Yeah. All right. Um, I've been to your church. I like that church. Nice church. Um, I see from your plan that you have big not big do not enter signs on the on the one side. Yes. I think I've gone the wrong way a couple of times and haven't noticed. Are those there now? I don't believe so, no. Okay, yeah, uh, those and, would be... And you wouldn't be alone in that. Yeah, I, those would be helpful. I, every time I've been to the church, I've met someone who hasn't been there, um, they use both of these for in and out. And, and I think yeah. with this, this round, we'll put some additional signage up. Uh, we're actually... This, this works out that when we come in on this lane here, we're going to use this piece of sidewalk as a drop-off, and so it'll be striped so that the cars will essentially work work their way around that. And I think that will enhance the one-way aspect of it. And we'll use this side over here as a pickup sidewalk so that we'll, we'll again, stripe it so that it's a pickup zone and, and label it. <coughs> it sort of narrows it down a little bit visually, even though there's still two right. lanes. Okay, that makes sense. And then, I'm not sure if it's feasible, but uh, and I'd have to ask Angela or maybe Jay, when they have that one lane that comes out, could they paint that and make a right-hand turning lane and a left-hand turning lane. And the only reason I ask that is because I've been there before when people get quite impatient waiting for someone to make a left. Yeah, we can do that. And they tend to, I've seen you, sometimes people exit there hastily <laughs> because they've been waiting for 20 minutes yeah. to get sure. out. Of sure, we can, we can make that. Uh, Could that uh, be something that sure. would, would be from the town engineer standpoint, can they have a right and left turning lane? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think when you talk, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that you're showing like twenty feet of wide, yeah. right? So there would be two narrow, right? So you it would be slip by. Yeah, two can or or I think eleven foot lines. Realistically, you're going to queue up so far that you're going to get one or two to be able to be going to separate out, but it's going to back up so far. I think you'll get some relief, but not a whole lot. Yeah. The scenario just laid out. Yeah, I mean, I, it's great that you're going to have more parking, and that church is getting more and more popular all the time. So the, the street, and I, it makes sense that you know, people park out front so that the older folks can have a better parking space closer to the building. But um, the high school is right up the street, so you've got teenagers driving up and down that road sometimes too. Not that there's anything wrong with teenage drivers. My son's 17, so hope he's out watching. Um, so, yeah, if you could do whatever you could to um, alleviate that, that would be good. Do you have a, I didn't see a lighting plan. It's probably too preliminary for that, yeah, right? Yeah, it's too preliminary. We yeah. did We You'll did it the, the last parking lot when we did it here. They're going to be the same type of okay. lights. They're uh, LED cutoff fixtures that, that will be, again, in the islands as we go all the way around. All right. And then I'm a, I'm a big fan of lighting on the entrance and the exit because I know you're going to have... You know, you have youth group there at night and stuff, so um, whatever activities you have at night, it's nice yeah. to have it really nice and bright. Right, right out here yeah. at the entrance and exit. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, other than that, I think it looks great. Thank you. Um, would you like to go next? Sure. <coughs> um, do you expect to um, request any waivers for any reason? Not that I know of at this point. 
Um, can you talk about um, where snow storage might be? Look, we've We've left uh, a five-foot piece here that will be in front of the, the vehicles here that will be snow storage along this side, uh, and the same along this back area. There's a little bit more back in through here. And again, uh, along this side, there is some, not as much, but essentially we'll be around the parking lot. Um, it's a very heavy snow winter. Wouldn't surprise me if these end up being slightly shorter spaces. Okay. Um, given the underdrain soil filter, filters that are proposed. I agree with staff that I think it should be some type of underground vaulted system. Um, but you've got to be very careful, obviously, about putting some type of traffic control up so that snow storage doesn't happen in those underdrained soil filters. How do you propose that? Uh, what we can do is we can we can put some signage up right in through okay. here that says underdrained soil filter and okay. no snow storage. Or, or rocks or, or something, yeah. So yeah. Where, where do they discharge? Um, the, the yeah, the this, this one here discharges out this corner, and yep. then there's uh, a little swale that runs sort of like this out through here. And then here you can see the swale here that runs up. Yep. So these two will discharge uh, right out here at the corner. Okay. Uh, the new plans have a underdrain soil filter, I believe, in this spot in here for the road. Uh -huh. And that will discharge in the same location out here as well. Okay. Uh, these two get tied together and discharge out there. And isn't there one down at the bottom, too, um, the bottom corner? This one, this one here and one here. Oh, I thought there was one more in the bottom corner. No, all of, all of, this is, this is slightly higher down here than okay. over here. You know, everything drains, wants to go in that direction. All right. Um, so we're, we're picking up the water with a catch basin in this corner and tying it into the basin here and then, and then coming across. Excellent. Um, are you going to have solid waste dumpsters, anything like that? We do. We've, we've shown them back here in this corner. They uh -huh. line up with this, this exit aisle. Uh -huh. uh, currently, they're, they're located over here. We went round and round whether they could stay there or not and okay. decided that with the additional islands and the landscaping, it's not the place. Uh, it's a long walk from the, from the church to the dumpsters, but that was really the best place for them. Um, just a couple of remaining things. Um, have you talked with the fire department about the idea of a drop-off and a pickup location to make sure that that's not imposing on the fire lane or anything like that? Uh, we haven't. Okay. Um, the last time when we added the parking back here, um, as long as this radius here and this radius here were big enough so they could drive um, vehicles around the building, they were pretty happy with it. Okay. Uh, it will be sprinkled. Okay. And we'll obviously have to work with them and then the state fire marshal's <coughs> office to go through all the permitting process when we get to the building, building permit. Have you thought about any shading in the, of the parking area as proposed in staff comments? Um, what, what we're looking at is the larger trees here. Uh, Tony, Tony has put together the larger trees on these islands. Uh, so that was the shading piece. The staff comments were done we submitted before we had a landscape plan. We were really anxious to get, get going here. So Tony's been working on that. Um, it's 95% it's ready. We'll be ready once we get the easement from, from Steve to uh, be able to do the grading and the buffer, to be able to submit to both DEP uh, and, and back to the town. Um, we assume you're going to want the DEP permit in place before we get here for the final. Uh, we expect that to be a 60 to 90 day review period. Um, when are you hoping to break ground? Probably in September. Okay. Um, there's a fundraising piece that goes with this and uh, that has to be successful. Sure. Um, they've been, everybody that's involved with the church and that type of thing has been very enthusiastic. So there's high optimism that that's not going to be a stumbling block. Obviously the two have to match up. So. And then uh, the last question may not, I'm not sure if it's for you, Tom, or if it's for staff about the, um, the left-hand turn lane in Gorham Road. Would that be the multi-directional one in the center that, that would be used by either inbound or outbound traffic? Or what, would, yeah. what would that left-hand turn yeah, lane Yeah, I'll, like? I'll pick that one up. Okay. That's, that's likely to be only a left-hand turn oh, lane okay. at this site. Um, there's no really left-hand turn lane on the other side that would demand it. Okay. Um, if you look at the original aerial photo, um, this, this, this side of the site is pretty wet. There's, there's a little stream that runs up through here. 
Um, it's, it's not likely to be developed. Okay. So we're, we're thinking that it would be just who with this. Got it. Yes. Super, that's all I have. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. Susan. <coughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. Thanks. It's been great having you here. Obviously, you like being in Scarborough, and we like having you here. Um, my questions are pretty basic. Um, your um, February 7th letter from Pinkham and Greer talks about developing a comprehensive landscape plan, which would include buffering to the Steve Bearers property. Would you show me where the Steve Bearers property is? He actually owns the property all the way around. Okay. He owns both of these okay. developments. Okay, so there is an attempt to make sure that he's happy yes. with whatever it is you're doing. Okay, I, I applaud that. It's called forward thinking. Um, okay, so you mentioned the landscaping area around the parking, which is very important to us, but yep. you know, I'm looking forward to a landscape plan, yep. which we're not ready for right now. I only have a question because most of my um, fellow people here on the board have asked most of the questions, oh excuse me, is uh, when you get the new addition to um, Borm Road, the landscaping across the front. Yes. There's not anything there right now. Right, that's correct. And so, it, go ahead. This, this, I guess we didn't get these on here. What you see here on, the, on this lower picture yeah. is with an alley of trees and that type of thing to, to set the street edge behind the sidewalk is what we're looking to do. Okay. A and there will be uh, a full landscape plan going across here. It's really tricky in this climate to talk about that kind of landscaping, but I would like to suggest that when you contract with your landscape contractor, that you find as many ways to do non-deciduous as possible because you're going to be right on the line of, you know, how far forward you can go. And I'm not, I, I think the church is going to be very attractive. I don't want to destroy the view of the church, but I think there needs to be between, I'm looking at some, the front yep. of what you show here, okay, and I love the rock wall and the, the um, entrance further back, but um, what you're showing is some deciduous and a bunch of non-deciduous, and I want to make sure that I put out there that I would like the front to be the same, some non-deciduous as well, so that in the winter, right now, when we're all unbelievably waiting for another friggin' snowstorm, that we have something out there that is not just bare branches. Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll give that a try, but it's going to be difficult to do. Um, this whole piece here is an underdrain soil filter, and so the, the bottom of it has got some small plants with it and up it against some, the building. I'm sorry, the bottom of it has some what? Some small plants. The, the bottom of it's very flat. The, what we're going to see is, is during a heavy storm, you're going to see roughly two feet of water there, <coughs> and it drains out over a period of uh, 24 to 48 hours. And while that's draining out, we, we need some plants that are very specific to the Right, I hear feet. you. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. yeah as well as uh, in the summertime, it dries out, and they end up being very dry feet. So it's 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 a little bit of both. The place that we have to be able to plant is really right along the back of the sidewalk, and planting evergreens along the back of the sidewalk encroaches into the sidewalk. So we're we're sort of limited to what we can put okay. exactly in front of the building. Well, the only other thing to mention, if it's going to turn out that way, is that what I'm looking at on the front page here, between the stone wall to the left and the end of the building to the right, we might want to do something to break up that wall other than landscaping. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so show me where the brick wall, where the uh, stone wall stops. This, this, is yep. the, this is the stone corner here. It is lovely. Yep. As I turn and go to the uh, west, there's nothing but a deciduous... A, we need, I, I'm just wondering if you would take a little closer look at how to break that up, yes. because it's a very large wall that is right on the frontage to Gorma. Yeah, I think the staff had made some comments that there's some windows in through here. Windows. Uh, Something. We, yeah, we looked at a door potentially from the back of it coming out onto it, mm -hmm. uh, but the but the finished floor of this is about four feet or five feet above the finished grade, 
And so it, it's, it really doesn't work from a, just from a practical point of view. When you walk out, there's, you need a bridge to get any place. So we, we think it's going to be a series of windows or some other way to break up that. that some other way. That would be wonderful. Just, just to break that up because it, we're, we're accustomed. We, we, you've been with us for a long time, but you're way back there. Yep. And now you're coming up here. So it would be really nice if you did something to break that up so it's not just this big blank wall. And yep. we'll look for that when you come back. Yeah, we will do that. Um, we'll also, in the staff comments, it was recommended we meet with the staff before that gets finalized. I think it's been passed along to the architect Good. that he's to meet with Jay. So Good. we hope to take the set. right step there. Welcome. We'd like it. Sure. Um, regarding landscaping, <clears throat> I just wanted to bring it to your attention that um, because landscaping will be such an important element, I think, of this site that to, to remind you in Chapter 405B under landscaping, 9A, there is a written maintenance plan that that is required as far as the installation and guarantees sure. and irrigation provisions to make sure that there is um, long-term maintenance of the landscape. Thank okay. you. We'll take a look at that. I'll have Tony write something up. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. <clears throat> My colleagues have touched on a, quite a few of the points here. Uh, you know, from, from just listening to you, and uh, you brought up a couple of these items, it seems like most of the staff comments here are fairly comfortable with uh, yep. making some adjustments to the current sketch plan. Uh, the, there is one, uh, I think, one detail that the board needs to weigh in on a little bit more closely, which is that left-hand turn uh, from Gorham Road into the church and whether or not yes. um, it's, it's critical the staff has pointed this out, which is if, if it's something that the... Uh, something that is needed. It, it does have a very serious impact on what the current design of the 114 corridor is going to look like. So, um, and, and staff, uh, I, you said it so eloquently that I want to help float it here, but uh, are the benefits of adding the left-hand turn lane uh, to improve safety and functionality along the corridor such that a redesign of the town-approved corridor improvements would be warranted? Do we, do we want to change what has already been put into place uh, to accommodate this. Is that left-hand turn lane? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I think Bill Bray is going to work with MDOT on it and determine whether or not the, the, even though the numbers trigger it, whether the time frames that we are actually taking those left-hand turns warrant putting a left-hand turn lane out there that widens up the pavement, adds to the pavement, um, it gets away from the look that you were trying to get to with a small and narrower road to keep the speeds down and all of that. So, so we're going to let I'm, I'm going to let Bill Bray and MDOT sort of solve that issue for us. And if if they come back and say it's necessary, then we'll we'll meet with the town and and, and do that piece of it. Uh, I assume that Angela will be part of those discussions at their at their scoping meeting and the like. So, the, the town will have some input there as well. Um, but I think that's that's the that's the route that we need to take in order to come up with a resolution to it. Um, if if it is necessary, then I'm sure it'll end up being passed back to Woodard and Curran to to take a look at that stretch again and say how, what's the best way to make that work. And am I am I correct in understanding that it's not necessarily required by us? Is that well, I, I guess that's all part of the, the discussion, and that's okay. why I said, you know, we really need to understand what those impacts are, and, you know, is it, you know, I think that's where the board, once we have more information, will need to weigh the merits of, you know, what what is a little, you know, would not building a left-hand turn lane cause inconvenience along the ar arterial? If the answer is yes, then okay, what's a, what's a bearable amount? You know, what, where does it make sense? Does it make sense on a Wednesday afternoon where it's really a, a travel corridor or does a Sunday morning make it a different situation? So I guess, you know, it, it, at this point it bears more information, but I think ultimately um, there will probably be some evidence and information provided for this board to make a decision based upon. Yep. We'll wait and see. Yeah, I think that was the that was one of the critical issues that we saw. The other was the total number of parking spaces, and our plan is to switch from four services on Sunday to two, and if two still has excess parking, then then our traffic management, uh, traffic demand management plan will be to go to three services 
and spread it out even more so that we can keep keep them on site. Um, so I think we 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 have some flexibility there to make make all of that work. So your intention is to actually reduce the number of services you're currently having, which and, and you view it that way in light of that you have more space available for the, for the vehicle. Yeah, that's that's probably the driver of it. Um, because there's so many services, um, if you look at it, we have four different communities that, that come Sunday, and what we're trying to do is to get to one community. Um, obviously, that's we're not going to have just one service and, and, and everybody there, but but at least the more people that come, the more interactions there are with the church members. Um, it's, it's just a better feeling all the way around when you have when you have have all of the members there at once, or more members there at once. And just out of curiosity, how how much um, how much evaluation would you do before altering your service schedules? Uh, you know, are you finding that the first month of parking is, you know, you've obviously reduced the number of services too much, and we've got overflow, you know, onto 114 again? Yeah, it, it'll it'll have to be week to week. I mean, it's it's reasonably easy to change the number of services and 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 the like. That's that's not a hard hard thing to do, and it may be a case that. That peak times we have three services, and then off times, you know, um, we only have two. You know, that, that it gets changed month to month, just to, to match up. And do you feel like the parking that you are proposing here uh, will provide your current uh, parishioner level with enough enough spaces? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, as I said, we have some flexibility in the number of services. We also have some flexibility that if we have to, um, a remote lot with a shuttle. Uh, will also work for us, and that may be one of the options that we that we have. Uh, we haven't identified it yet, but but that's been talked about so that that we we know to respond to it. The the thing that we see in the staff memo and in the new Route One corridor design is parking on Route 114 is not going to be allowed anyway. Now we have an eight foot wide shoulder that's wide enough to get a car completely off the travel lanes. Um, reasonable, comfortable to, to be able to get in and out with the travel lanes there. When you cut that down to a five-foot bike lane, it's not parking, it's not wide enough, um, there's just really no place to park at all. So we understand that, that it's coming is, is no parking. Right. And along the similar vein, uh, would you consider the uh, back of your lot there, you have space. Yep. If you had done or had proposed and do propose to put in an underground uh, stormwater, then it seems to me like you might be able to utilize some of that space. And I understand your reasoning behind current green space you have there. Yeah. But down the road, if you continue to expand and attract uh, more people, that's a, that's a possibility we can do that. So looking ahead. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. My environmental side kicks in a little here. Yeah. Um, I, I the soil filter in the back mm -hmm. works really well as an open filter. Um, the grass that grows there does a much better job at cleaning out the hydrocarbons and the, and the light from the runoff and the salt and all of that. Whereas if you put it underground, some of that treatment, although it meets the standards, goes away. And so from a, an environmental point of view, we're better off having an open filter than we are having a closed filter. Um, in the future, if it's necessary to close it off, it's designed in such a way that you could actually come in there Strip off the topsoil, put in some chamber systems, and still continue to use the the structure that's underneath of it. It's deep enough that we can we can still uh, get water into it and out of it and the, and the like. So it's not a it's, a it's a huge expense to do that, but it's not an impossible. We, we aren't creating a situation where we're throwing away all of what we're putting in. Okay, appreciate that. And then I. Uh I think I just echo some of my colleagues' sentiments too, and uh, you know, uh, stay stay with you know the staff comments, continue that dialogue, and um, it sounds like this is this is headed in the right direction. Susan, sorry, I just discovered this page that I had written with notes. <laughs> I was looking for <laughs> frantically. Um, I, the only thing that is left is that I didn't mention before. I want to make sure that this. Um, um, the idea that to ensure the visual buffer, particularly of the large parking lot and the budding residential property should be considered utilizing varied and layered vegetation. And I was thinking about berm, and that's just because I am very fond of berms. 
and you know because the way the the road comes up towards what's going to be happening, which is going to be at the basic same eye level. To, you might want to just ask the people that are going to do your landscaping to yep. seriously think about berms. I'm sorry. No, I just have one more comment. On okay, I'm not quite done, but I'm almost done. Um, uh, wait a minute, where was it? Um, oh, underground, underground um, utilities. Yes. That is mentioned. So if you have, have you given that some consideration? Yes, and I think we're going to do that. We're, we'll okay. be able to change the electrical piece around. Thank you. That's really great. And my last comment for the record is, is just that you can get the same environmental value from an underground stormwater vault through an oil water separator and the like to remove those, those petroleum hydrocarbons. Yep. So let's not rule it out for, for that purpose. Thanks. Is there any other comments from the board? Thank you very much, and good luck. We look forward to seeing you in a few weeks. From now. Great. Thank you very much. Next item we have uh, is JDR Trust 2, Request for Site Plan and Subdivision Plan Review for 25 Plaza Drive, Assessor's Map R58, Lot 32M. Jay, would you like to start us off? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see. This item is before you, as you just noted, for a site plan and subdivision. Um, principally, it's going to be our site plan review standards that really govern the review. The subdivision is being triggered due to the fact that the applicant is seeking to establish uh, a mixed-use building, which uh, at least one of the buildings is going to be mixed-use with some residential on the second and third floors and office space on the first floor. Um, board members will remember, or hopefully remember anyway, yes. that we did a site visit to this uh, site back in the fall, probably September or October time frame. Um, so now the applicant has come forward with um, five plans for board consideration. Um, so to that end, you will receive uh, not only staff comments, but a round of comments from Woodard and Curran as well as Bill Bray, um, Traffic Solution, to conduct a traffic peer review. Um, let's see, so um, at this point, I think one of the principal elements that were flagged in staff comments, I think also echoed in Bill Bray's comments, really had to do with um, traffic impacts and understanding uh, what the proposed development um, impacts would be, particularly at the intersection where Plaza Drive comes to Route 1. Um, essentially, as, as the, the traffic engineers identified, this really maxes out the, um, that intersection. And one of the things that we had talked about during sketch plan and site plan review was really taking a look at creating a uh, potential for future cross-lot uh, access to the abutting Foley property, which would then allow for traffic to flow uh, more directly to the signalized intersection at Hannaford Drive and Route 1. Um, so we're appreciative that the applicant has identified an area for that. And I think we just want to be sure that it's that uh, fully vetted as this application moves forward. Um, we do note that the applicant does require a DEP permit as part of their project, and we know there's been a, a ongoing conversations there. I believe actually Angela Blanchett was involved in those conversations and um, she may have more to offer in that vein. Um, so, you know, again, you have a, a list, detailed list of staff comments, but I think at this point I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair, if Angela wants to chime in. Thank you very much. Can you just state your name? Sure. Uh, my name is Kylie Mason. Is this working? No. No, it never works for me. Oh, is that better? All right. My name is Kylie Mason. I'm a Maine licensed landscape architect. Uh, I'm a resident of Scarborough, and I've been practicing here for about 12 years. Um, this is, I think, a great project. Um, I think we all want to see Oak Hill revived. Um, as we've talked about in the past, right now we're showing a 5,000 square foot bank. Um, the proposed connectivity point that Jay was discussing is right here. Um, the existing building would be rehabbed uh, from a facade uh, treatment, and then we're proposing a mixed-use uh, retail and residential or office building in this location. Um, we have provided on-street parking. I think we've done a good job of making sure we had the right dimensions. We've been working very closely with staff 
I think uh, throughout this project, we've been working really closely uh, with staff to understand um, goals, to communicate the applicant's goals, and to put everything onto a, a well-defined plan set. One of the questions that we have is that um, one of the comments um, that we have in the staff comments is that uh, the subdivision sheet should note that the final design and layout of the site is to be determined through a site review plan process. And one of the questions that we have is that um, we are seeking site plan approval and subdivision approval. So um, the suggestion that we identify the layout of the buildings as conceptual only, um, we would just like to seek a little clarification on that to better understand the intention. Um, certainly, I think uh, if we receive approval, the goal would be that Steve and a potential developer could go and get their building permit. So understanding that will be important. I think uh, the stormwater DEP piece, um, we have been um, moving forward under the assumption of delegated review. It was only during our NRPA permitting that we discovered uh, there was a common thread of ownership, which kicked it into um, a site location of development, common scheme of development. And so we are working with DEP. That application has been reviewed. Um, we're making a couple modifications to stormwater. Um, ben Viola doesn't like the um, lack of grass over treatment strips because of the hydrocarbons, so we're actually having to add that back in. Um, so it's one of the things that we're modifying uh, as we go forward, um, and that's supposed to be going in next week. So with any hope, um, we'll be back for approval unless there's an opportunity to receive some sort of conditional approval. Um, for landscaping, we do have a pretty uh, robust uh, planting plan. We have a lot of evergreens at the front, um, picking up on Susan's uh, comments from the last applicant and noting Mrs. Saunders' comments about the maintenance plan. Uh, I think I'd like to know a little bit more about what you'd expect because certainly we can su suggest a maintenance plan that is reasonable, but I think we'd like to understand if we're submitting something, um, what we're committing to. Um, and again, just picking up on comments so that I might help uh, foresee what's coming next. Um, to talk about the buildings a little bit, we do have Kevin here uh, from Garland Turgeon. Uh, Steve Berg is also here. Sorry, I should have introduced him first. Um, Kevin did this great rendering of the context of the site, and I think it communicates um, the layout of the buildings, I think the parking lot layout, um, the plaza drive and the on-street parking. I think it really will make a great improvement to the area. Um, I, I think it's a, a great improvement. Um, just looking at the three-story mixed-use building, it's very similar to the building that's across the street. Um, this was some feedback that we received from Jay early on to have it really mirror the building across Plaza Drive, so we took that advice. Um, the materials are very similar, the layout, the size and dimension of the building are very similar as you can see here. And then from a bank perspective, this would be just out in front, so that would be, sorry, we're down here, this building, and this would be looking at it from the Plaza Drive view uh, into the site. And again, a, a very nice facade. Is there any questions I can answer? Thank you. Um, I uh, just want to say, <coughs> uh, Rachel has rejoined us. You are voting them this evening. Thank you. And uh, this is the first time around. I believe we will have some public comment on this. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak? Okay, I'll close the public comment section. Thank you. Uh, so, Susan? Yes. Um, I'm a little confused about the um, Connectivity? Sure. Okay. Would you say a little bit about that? The applicant has depicted an area on the site plan future easement for connectivity? Sure. This would be similar to, um, and I guess just to direct you to a page for reference, this would be similar to the approach taken on the Martins Point development. Um, it's delineating an area for future easement for connectivity. And the reason is because um, we can show the connection on our property. So if you look at page 5 of 24 on the plan, and I'll use this as an exhibit. 
Um, this area right here um, to provide kind of a straight through connection from the parking lot has been designated. Right now there's a number of propane tanks which you can see in the area but unfortunately you can't see on your plans. So there's a, a series of propane tanks here um, that obviously would need to be relocated. It's quite a large uh, green area um, and so there'd be a bit of a connection needs, that would need to be made behind the flower shop here in order to get somebody's circulation towards the um, signalized access. I think one of the comments that we had received before was a desire to have a connection here. Uh, we did look at that and I think you'll find on the existing conditions plan that the grades are significant uh, for a short, um, for such a short run and they put you out into a parking lot um, mm -hmm. for TD Bank. So if I were to look at the grades, in fact, if you look at that area um, on page 8 of 24 of the plan set, you'll notice that there's quite a um, steep grade change there. We go from 69 at the stormwater area to 74. So a five foot grade change right at that area. So um, the other one was more desirable. We are showing it for connectivity. Thank you. I'm a little um, not confused. That's an overstatement. I'd like you to walk me through if I'm going to come to the bank. Walk me through how I drive in, around, and out. How you drive in, around, and out? Yes. You would drive in Wait for, minute. well, let me, if you're going through the ATM or the drive through teller, you would drive in, and then you can drive this way, or you could certainly continue through. So if I drive to the left, the first left after having gone through, no, go okay. back to the bank. Okay. Okay, so I drive through, and I'm going to take a left. Mm -hmm. And I come down through two parking areas. I mean, I, it's a driveway between two parking areas. Mm -hmm. And then the other choice is to go straight ahead. Right. And come um, through a parking area. I'm, I'm not, like, terribly concerned, but I'm a little concerned because I do drive-ins all the time. I drive by, you know. I mean, I do my banking pretty much at the um, um, external access. I'm a little concerned about the fact that that's going to be, it will be the main exit out. Now, as I come out of where that is, I have to turn slightly left to exit from the center, right? Yeah, it's not a straight shot. Left. You, turn, you turn left and then you make another turn left, you, you mean onto Plaza Drive? Yeah. Yes. So in a previous concept, if I, if I might, um, in a previous concept we actually did have um, that coming straight through and a terminating of <coughs> the existing entrance. That's what and I remember. the concern was that we weren't aligning the driveways. And so um, that concept was abandoned for the more desirable alignment of driveways. Has this been discussed with staff? Um, we've reviewed the plans, and I do remember sort of talking about the offset of drive because the drive uh, across the way from mm -hmm. I, if you mm -hmm. I that, that that's a that's the um, arterial, if you will, that comes basically directly straight down from one port uh, from one fourteen past no doesn't that go no. past the Walgreens and mm -hmm. and past the no. beverage store? Uh, no, this no. one, the one. Am I in the wrong? Yeah. Uh, this is the one that one that comes right. down here. Yeah. Um, I right, believe that's the, that that's what we were talking about originally was trying to align this and terminate this. Mm -hmm. And the desire was to maintain this connection by the car wash, uh, the dance studio, um, and the connectivity back here. So we do, and we do have um, some early concepts. We we did a number of concepts leading up. Uh, to our actual one. first sketch plan submission work. I'm just at this point just pointing out that I'm not sure that I'm convinced that that's the only answer to what we're doing here because it is it is true. I, I really think it's the best place for the bank, but I'm not sure that's the best circulation of traffic. So if we can just make sure that staff works with you a little more deeply on that, I would appreciate it. So what would you, I mean, because we've explored that previous concept with staff, we also had another concept that had the driveway looping coming from this way, coming around and looping through and reconnecting here. Yep. Um, but as I understand it, that was not fitting with um, the intention of 
the ordinance to have the driveway. But that's my issue is that I don't really understand, and that's why I'm asking if right. staff would be willing to take another look at that with the applicant just to make sure that this is the best. I'm a little concerned about coming through, um, going through the double parking area here. Sure, we're happy to look at it. I'm sorry? We're happy to look at it. I would like to make sure that it's resolvable. So what would the what would a desired resolution would it be a re revised design or um, a statement from staff? I would, have a, I would have an easier time with it going as you just said in front of the bank and coming out on the other side. But I'm not a traffic engineer, so I just would like to have staff. I'm going to turn it over to Jay. We can have uh, our traffic engineer take a look at the Would you please? That's all I'm asking. I mean, I'm, I don't pretend to. I don't pretend to have a real answer. I just want to make sure that that is the best answer to the <coughs> question. I just want to make sure that I say that I'm very excited about this. Um, the only other real comment I have is, well, my goodness, where is the? There it is. Um, when we come to the thing about um, architecture and signage. I've been very concerned about signage for a long time, of course. I'm, if I'm not landscaping, I'm signage. Um, we're holding quote-unquote from staff comments, a significant performance guarantee for completion of a master signage plan, and what better time to do it than right now. So I just want to put in a real plug for making that signage plan happen. <coughs> um, I'm sure there are other things that will come up, but basically those are my primary concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Rob? Thank you. <coughs> um, so walking through the staff comments, um, the first one is, is about, uh, as you had mentioned already, um, um, the need for basically the unified ownership statement kind of a thing. And um, it is noted that the, that the standard states that the document creating such restrictions shall be reviewed by the town's attorney before the planning board grants final approval. So what kind of timeline are we looking at for that? I'm, I'm sorry, um, for the unified ownership? Yeah, under the staff comments that were uh, received today, March 13th, under subdivision elements, it's the first bullet. So I guess that's a question for Jay because we've, we've submitted the subdivision plan and a um, statement from the owner. So the, the ordinance talks about, um, has specific language around unified ownership where you have multiple buildings on a single lot that it needs to be, um, there needs to be a, um, a deed uh, restriction covenant put in place. Um, that we do have template language that we can um, we'll, we'll share with the applicant so their land use attorney can take a look at it or they can sign it. It was trapped by our attorney. So I don't think the timeline on that is very long. I wouldn't anticipate. Um, yeah, just to echo on that. You just I mean, introduce yourself. My name is Steve Berg. I'm the trustee for JDR Trust, the owner of the property, properties. Right now, it's made up of three separate parcels or at least shown on the plan is that. Um, and we've you know, given over the agreement where it's for the right title and interest that we'd unify them into one lot mm -hmm. just to you know, simplify things and then we would sign whatever documentation is required to. Just knowing that, that I think Kylie was talking about wanting approval next time and that this might nice happen before board approval, I just was wondering if that could That's all a good thing happen concurrently. Sure. Yeah. The other thing, um, think, thinking about legal reviews too is should, um, and, and maybe I'm jumping the gun here, Jay, too, but should that legal review also include uh, some of the easement discussions on page two regarding that connectivity pass-through kind of a thing? Yeah, I guess that's what my comments were, were aimed at, yeah. was to ensure that those are pretty well documented. I think in this instance where, you know, I think Bill Bright sort of captured pretty well in his, his review of it that this development really does, as I said, max out that left-hand turn lane, that Plaza Drive Route 1 intersection. So, so the build-out of, of the interconnection may or may never happen, but I think securing that future ability is what the ordinance really seeks. So I think we'll just want to see that um, 
sort of play that seeds out. A bit yeah, further. and I just saw the two of those kind of related. So I'm mm -hmm. I just sure. Sort of no, that could be a note on the yeah. uh, subdivision plan. Yep. <coughs> so we have the language to get for that as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, my other comments are um, uh, was about that sheet three of 24, Kylie, where you were talking about uh, the subdivision note. <coughs> We trust that you'll work that out with staff. Um, I think that no, no. I was just okay. if you don't mind. Um, that that, that um, I did want to get to um, a little clarification. That that was a pretty actually I thought a simple statement. All I wanted to do and, and the reason for it was a subdivision plan gets reported at the registry yeah. of deeds, and so what happens sometimes if you have a buildings shown on that and then you want to do a small tweak to those buildings, well guess what, you got to do a whole subdivision recording. So all it is is, it, is have the sheet that's getting recorded recognize sort of the conceptual layout and say this is, you know, it will have to codify how many dwelling units we're going to have, which, you know, right now we're talking about eight units and, and, and sort of codify those things, but it's really just about parsing out what's on those sheets. So it's really an administrative function, not a uh, Sounds good. So, so and then also on that sheet, Kylie, um, have have you all confirmed that northern property line or verified that northern property line? Yeah, the the document that we're showing for the existing conditions plan is a field located survey. Okay. So that was done recently, or that was done this fall. Great. Okay. Um, while we're in the the, the drawing set, we just click to uh, sheet four of twenty four. And there's some demolition notes on there. Sure. Um, is there any sequencing for demolition, or do these numbers or anything reflect the sequencing? No, they're they're completely just based on how they're labeled on the plan. Okay. There is no sequencing. Was that in that. a previous submittal, then, Kylie, about what the sequencing of demolition and then construction would look like, or will you be maybe talking about that in a pre-construction meeting, perhaps? That would be a pre, yeah, that would be more of a pre-construction meeting in terms of when they're going to saw cut, when they're going to close an entrance. Yeah. If I might just jump mm -hmm. in on that one, yeah. I, I do think that if the intent is to do the development in phases, um, that, it, um, that the, the plan submission should include a phasing plan so we sort of know what extent. I don't know that we need to go to the full extent of all the demolition involved, but at least so we know which improvements at the end of it um, are anticipated with each phase of development and sort of a time frame for each phase of development. Given that our ordinance sort of requires that developments occur within a year, um, the board can approve a phasing plan. And so, again, if they want to build, say, the building to the, to the left in the, in the first year or two, that we don't then wind up holding a performance guarantee for the bank that may not be for another year or two. Um, so just clarifying what those expectations are, what level of parking and that. So absolutely, and that's where I was going with it too, is understanding how the demolition and construction may, um, what the implications may be on parking, safety, and the like. If it would um, be pleasing to the board and staff, I think what we can do is simply put a line down the middle because we don't know which one will go first. And that would just depict what effort goes with which that development. Entirely up and to that way, and we will call them A and B as opposed to one and two, so as not to confuse the issue. Does that seem acceptable? I was getting, I was getting into a little more. I think a little more detail is needed than just putting a line down the middle. But I'll let you work that out with staff. I mean, I don't want to micromanage the project. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> next, I guess, um, I had a comment here about traffic, um, but don't know what it was. <laughs> Maybe we already talked about it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to bounce down the landscaping, buffering, and green space. Again, um, I know you had a question on what the written landscape maintenance plan is, but if you just go to... Yeah. Section uh, F of the plan, it tells you we need detail on irrigation, what the annual maintenance is, and the replacement policy to make sure that we've had a lot of things come back to the board right. where the landscaping just didn't work out because of the drought that we had last mm -hmm. year. So I just want to give you fair warning that that's something that I'm going to be looking for in the future. Sure. So because we're not proposing any irrigation, um, and we do have the warranty period on the plant, um, would your uh, suggestion be to suggest plant replacement as 
needed? I, w I would just encourage you to take a look at the ordinance and meet the ordinance as it, as it is. And I, I, it's been an ordinance for quite a while, so I think you've done some other work in town, so maybe you've submitted yeah, it. Yeah, it, I've actually done quite a few plans. Um, there's a, a couple of comments that have come up recently that I think are um, probably because of the, the growth in industry. Um, I guess typically we've submitted our landscape notes. Have those been... I actually looked at the maintenance plan today and was curious about it, but I think our notes have always sufficed on the plans. Do the notes on the plans meet? I haven't looked at them. I, to be completely honest, okay. I haven't parsed them completely because it wasn't for approval. Okay, so given yeah, given the history, I, I'm of the <coughs> opinion, but I, I will look at it again. Okay, and then um, I'm noticing too in stormwater management that you have an underdrain trench. Mm -hmm. Seven feet by a hundred feet. Mm -hmm. um, can you point out where that is relative to sure. parking spaces? And that trench is actually uh, along the drive lane here. It's the way we're capturing the runoff from the drive-through lane. Okay. And there's there's uh, <coughs> and so the only other thing is roof drip line trenches. Nope. You have uh, there's three tree filters. Okay. Um, on the site. So there's actually uh, one here, one here, and one here. And uh, the only unfortunate thing is because um, we're leaving delegated review, we are changing the tree filter um, to a filtera, which um, will change the tree, will change the health of the, the tree that's in it, um, but will meet the Chapter 500 compliance okay. fee. Um, so we will need to change the tree filter, and I'm glad you brought that up because I neglected it in the statement. And then um, instead of having the crushed stone um, here, we are going to have to add the grass um, for Ben Viola's comments. Um, and then we do have the drip edges around the proposed building. Okay, and then I'll defer to Angela on whether or not that is enough because I was noticing that some of them are just for impervious area but not for landscaped area. So I'll let Angela reconcile that. But I did note in attachment D, which is your uh, inspection, maintenance, and housekeeping plan, that you reference that um, it doesn't really reconcile with what you have for your erosion control notes on page 14 of 24. Specifically, there's some pre-construction requirements that are not noted in this attachment D. And, um, I'm sorry, so i got to catch up to you. Where am I going? Well, you can either choose. You can go to Attachment D of your Stormwater Management Report. And it doesn't quite correlate with Sheet 14 of 24, where you have your erosion control measures. All right. Erosion control measures. So in general, the two don't necessarily jive. And, 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 uh, and in general, let me give you a specific. Mm -hmm. your, your attachment D, you don't address any pre-construction requirements, which are noted in here, which maybe you don't need, want to put in here. Right. Okay. Right. So this is just construction, um, active construction and post-construction. Right. The sto yeah, stormwater management, the inspection and housekeeping is literally that. Right. It's maintenance and housekeeping. Right. And so you the should have erosion control on the plans is for okay. construction. So you should have two maintenance logs, and and they're referenced in here, and there's only one. Uh, okay. Two maintenance logs in here. Two inspection logs. Yes. You have a post-construction one, but you don't have an active construction one. Yeah. This is. But it's, again, the inspection and maintenance is for post construction. No, no, no. In, in here on page, uh, your last page, page six of attachment D. It's, yep, it's, it's paragraph B. The last sentence of paragraph B says a sample stormwater inspection and maintenance form has been included as attachment two. That is not included. Okay. Oh, because we have it listed as attachment one and we don't have nope. attachment two. Attachment right. one is listed above. Right, I, I understand. Okay. Attachment two is. Okay, and then um, was there any consideration given of um, uh, our ordinance um, 
G8 for stormwater regarding um, sharing of basins between abutting properties. Are there um, basins on other properties around there that are going to be draining to this area? Um, I believe we're actually modeling for the Hannaford Drive stormwater, okay. but now because this is in Chapter 500, my guess is because we're meeting all of the Chapter 500 compliance under site law okay. that everything will fit within the ordinance, but I, I'm unsure <coughs> if there's going to be any additional. And last but not least, I want to talk about lighting and sewer. Um, have you been in touch with Dave Hughes and the sewer? <coughs> we have, and Jay, did you get a... I thought we sent the letters that we sent and then the responses. Okay. So you're on that. And then lighting. Are you requesting any waivers? There was no response provided regarding lighting from a staff comment. Lighting. I guess I don't know. Giving the rest, uh, Oh, the lighting. Um, I don't think the goal is to turn off the lights in the parking lot during evening and early morning hours simply because of the residential use and to try and keep that parking lot safe. All right, is there a waiver to turn off residential lighting uh, for multi tenant No, I just wasn't responded to, so I was just wondering if you were asking for a waiver or something, but um, no. in general, it seems like if it was residential, maybe you would want to turn it off, so it's not in their eyes. No, actually, for safety purposes, you wouldn't want to turn it off. You want to keep it on from dawn, dusk to dawn okay. um, you know, at several apartment complexes. All right, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Robin. Rick? Um, oh, these guys did a pretty good job. Do you, I didn't see where the mechanical area ended up. Yeah, that's a good, we were just talking about that before. Um, we will add um, mechanical areas to the roof of the building, of okay. both buildings. Okay. <coughs> All right. Unless, no, um, well, I'm sorry, I should, I should clarify. Did you mean HVAC or did you mean transformer? Right now we have the. No, I kind of know where the transformers are. Okay. I saw those. Right. I just didn't know. I saw one of the staff comments right. that you were still <coughs> working on. I just hadn't seen where it was. So I was just kind of curious. I thought it'd be rooftop, but yeah. I didn't know. Um, yeah. Other than that, I thought you guys did a nice job with this the middle. Yeah. So, uh, as far as lighting goes, you might want to consider. I do this, I work on the utility street lighting for the power company, so you can um, get sensors that are actually motion sensors now, depending on the light that you have. I don't know what you're doing, but, and, and I'm not saying you have to do it, I'm just throwing it out there that some people like to dim the lights after, you know, midnight or something, but have a motion sensor on it, so you can actually, but that may, may wake up more people than it, you know. That's exactly what I was going to yeah. say. I mean, the problem with that, if you have activity, um, it's going to be going on and off and being more of a distraction, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. You can actually, it, you can actually have them raise up nice and slow, and then go back down. But <laughs> I'm not trying to sell you lights. <laughs> I work for a power company, so <laughs> as long as they're using power, I'm happy. All right, I'm good. I got nothing else. Yeah, um, I was not here when you folks uh, first submitted. Um, so forgive me if I ask some questions that you've already already answered. Um, I guess one comment I have to make is I wasn't aware that there's any bank left in Maine that doesn't have a branch someplace in Oak Hill. <coughs> but uh, I, knowing how people react to things, I, and I do have a concern about traffic, I can see people coming in from Route 1, taking the absolute first road that they see to the right for the bank, realizing that they really want to go inside the bank and barreling past the drive-in and then taking a shop left turn so to get to the bank. So you really are going to need some sort of signage letting people know, um, reminding them that there may be people uh, at the windows who are going to start up not thinking that somebody's going to shut across all those lanes. Um, another question that I have is around the mixed use building. Are you anticipating that the tenants are going to be parking all in back or are they going to be in front? Is there going to be some sort of uh, requirement in terms of where they're going to park? Especially um, since they will be there overnight. Sure. Uh, the intention would not be to use the on-street parking. The intention would be to use the parking in the rear. <coughs> But the goal is to not sign parking because it is a shared use parking lot. 
um, you might want to consider putting something in the lease requesting that they do park and back, especially if there's going to be any sort of snow events like tomorrow. Uh, and I, as I looked at that building, I wasn't clear how the entrances and exits for either the commercial um, or the or the apartments are being handled. Is there a separate entrance for the apartments? If we don't have the full, since we don't have the drawings, it might show very well on the drawings, but we don't, yeah, that, we've that, just got the outside. Uh, sorry, yeah, my name is Kevin Downing from Garan Church and Architects. I work on the buildings. Uh, the, there are some in, uh, separate entrances. How do I answer this? The rear entrance here, there's one here, that one will have an entrance to a lobby and stair uh, where you will have access to the apartments above. The front entrance will have a vestibule where you will access the commercial uh, property, properties uh, that way. I did just look at this again today and I do think it's, <laughs> I do think what we're going to have to do is connect that in some way, whether or not this becomes a, a, a formal connected lobby between the two. Ultimately, I think they're going to need two, at least two exits from that stairwell. Uh, and on our first floor plan, we do not show that currently right now. So it's a great question, but that's how it's being handled. There's an elevator and stair accessible from that back door. Um, and I think what we're going to have to do is make sure that that front door also carries through to that same lobby. Thank you, because I, I did have a concern about pedestrian flow through the, the building and, and up to the apartment. Um, I really like the design that, that you've come up with um, and your efforts at the rehab and the renovation. And it looks good. Thank you. So I think we've touched on a, a lot of the issues. Um, I noticed that you did have a waiver in here for a reduced street width. Um, I, I personally am okay with the waiver uh, request. Is there anyone here that feels differently? We've kind of got that to work with. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think just to highlight some of the more important parts here, like solidifying that easement, um, making sure that everyone's comfortable with the way that works. Um, I, I agree with Susan that the circulation around the bank um, should be looked at again, um, just to make sure we're we're doing the best we can with the space you're being provided. Um, and then I'm going to ask uh, I'm going to ask you if there's anything here in staff notes that you feel would be difficult to overcome or comply with or incorporate into your designs. Oh, um, well, I thank you. That's um, very kind of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like to hash these things out. Yeah, I, I very much like that. Um, yeah, there's a couple. Um, so I think the one uh, that's probably got the greatest impact um, comes from Mr. Bray's memo. And um, that really has to do with the suggestion of the widening of Plaza Drive um, to have uh, two exit lanes and uh, one entrance lane. And I think what would be preferred would be for us to um, uh, eliminate the left-hand turn movement from Plaza Drive out into Route 1. Um, that could be done via, via signage. Um, but I think the, the widening of that, when we've been working really hard to narrow the width of Plaza Drive overall, um, presents a challenge. Um, let's see, I think there was another. Um, Certainly, I had to pick Mr. Berg off the floor uh, when we estimated the fees. Um, I don't suppose there's a waiver for that. <laughs> um, so I think from that perspective, that would be the biggest one. Um, second to that, let's see, um, there were a couple of, um, th and these are not necessarily um, financially difficult to overcome, but just um, housekeeping, um, the reference to handicap accessible crossings. Um, we have reviewed those with an accessibility uh, advocate. Um, they do meet um, 
accessibility guidelines. Um, one of the, I believe the one that's referenced um, is this one, is, is my guess, um, and perhaps it's this one, but their location is a function of their flush location with the, with the roadway and without creating unnecessary curbing, so which would create a, a um, difficult surface to traverse for somebody who is differently abled, the solution is to provide one continuous flush surface. Um, so this, this one and this one are actually following the flush gradient of Plaza Drive, uh, and they do have truncated domes along it. So while not financially infeasible, it is, um, it is a recognition of um, accessibility and just making it easy to traverse. Um, uh, and then I, I don't know that any comments are difficult to incorporate. Let's see. I think from a um, bus shelter standpoint, um, we were going to take the same approach we had on previous um, applications and let the town suggest the bus shelter they had wanted, um, which is why there are no details in the plan. Um, that just is a nod to the ongoing coordination. Um, I did not know it was called Shazoom. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> knowing what they would want, uh, we will Shazam put it in there. Um, and I guess the, um, the one comment um, for the parking space, we have provided um, the turning analysis showing its feasibility. I get the impression it would be desirable if we took it out. Um, and I guess just an opinion on that, we are trying to maximize the parking. I think certainly it makes a great sacrificial uh, snow storage area at the very least. Um, and I think um, going to the other um, comments of snow storage, um, we are using this kind of small area in the back. Um, it does, um, the way it's hatched does show it in conflict with some stormwater treatment, we'll take care of that. But I think the plan would be to provide some sacrificial snow storage until it's hauled off. And um, Mr. Briggs does have a contract with Rizbara uh, for snow removal and hauling. And I think just a, a nod to the kind of <coughs> development of the site would be welcome. But I don't think that anything is necessarily overwhelming. Okay. And then uh, as far as staff is concerned, I'm going to ask a similar question, which is, do you believe you have enough answers from the board or direction provided from the board now from this point to that anything that's not fitted out enough, you know, ferreted out enough for you? There's something we're lacking on providing you a direction. Uh, let's see. Angela, does anything pop to mind for you? I guess just the one thing to, to touch on maybe before as Angela sort of comes through is um, I do remember I, I did have a conversation with Bill Bray regarding the intersection at, at Route 1 and Hannaford Drive and you know as, as we sort of talked about this intersection really is at its max capacity particularly for left turns both in and out. You know left turns in it's really that the corridor issue and we really see that being a very difficult you know it, Given all the other curb cuts that are in there, that's really a bigger conversation than the one site plan was sort of our, our feelings. Left outs, you know, putting a sign up saying no left outs is all well and good. I think, you know, um, I think as our experience has shown with the, the Walgreens where we sort of have the very tight or supposedly tight right turn out only, still see people swing those left. So, you know, signage wouldn't hurt but don't know that it's going to stop anyone from making the movement that they want to make. Um, so I guess what we would look for is for um, the applicant's traffic engineer to provide some additional documentation if they feel that it's not necessary. Really, the impact is on those coming out of Plaza Drive. So tell, explain to us that's what we'd look for, is for the applicant to explain to give, provide evidence that they think it satisfies the ordinances and we'll give it due consideration. Okay. Well, I think uh, I think there's a unless you have something else to add, I think. Yeah, you I just want to make sure. Maybe I, I misunderstood one of the comments. Is there a dis is there a distinct request to widen Route One for a left turn lane into the site? 
I just wanted to make sure I understood. Okay, good. That was going to be more. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again in a little bit. Sure. Next, we have Fielding Properties LLC request a site plan amendment review for 74 Mason Libby Road, Assessor's Map R62, Lot 5. And uh, Robin, do you? I have to recuse myself from this one. Is this the Fielding? My husband works for Fielding. So I'm going to ask this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good try. We don't mean to banish you, but it's just best practices. Um, so I will turn this over to uh, Jay for a yep. little bit of prior on this. Okay, so just by way of uh, overview, this is in the industrial district. It's a property that's really uh, situated in between Washington Ave and Manson Libby uh, Road. Um, so just by way of background, this application was before the board in, I believe it was 2013, or I should say the site was before the board in 2013. And at that time, they got a uh, approval for really two phases of development. The first phase was the sort of large um, tanks that are at the, I'll call it the front of the site, um, if you will, sort of near the, where Manson Libby and Washington have come together. And then the second phase was for a garage sort of towards the rear of the lot, if you will. Um, down Man with access directly off Manson Libby. Um, phase one went along fine and accordingly. Phase two, um, at the time of the certificate of occupancy review, conducted my typical site visit. Um, and I think this is going back to maybe around summer, last summer. It, anyway, whenever it was, went out for a site visit and noticed that there seemed to be some encroachment into the wetlands behind the garage um, and the applicant sort of acknowledged that, said, yep, this, this occurred. Um, per their documentation, they sort of looks like they've gone through and dealt with that violation with the Army Corps and with DEP. And now that they've dealt with that violation and, and got additional wetland pool permitting, they are before the board for a uh, uh, expansion of their existing parking lot. So that's just by way of background. This is in the industrial district, so we don't have our design standards don't apply, but we do apply our site plan review ordinance and, and all those applicable standards. Um, so they'll receive comments through planning staff as well as a, 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 excuse me, a memo from Angela uh, Blanchett, our town engineer, Woodard and Kern, our um, civil engineer reviewers. Um, and the principal issues here, I think, really are around sort of the engineering and detailing of the parking lot. Um, so I'm going to turn it to Angela just in a moment. Just some of the sort of typical elements that planning staff will typically touch on that we identify. We're um, just thinking about landscaping around the proposed parking area, um, questions about lighting in the proposed parking field, and then finally we didn't understand where the, the existing dumpster was being relocated to. Um, but Maybe with that, I'd ask Angela to chime in if she wants to add anything. Um, sure. Um, really, it comes down to looking at the amount of wetland fill and the progression of wetland fill over the recent years and, and how that affects the runoff from the site. And obviously, a wetland is working as a detention pond, per se. And so what the applicant is showing is an increase in flow um, from the site, which on its own might be look uh, insignificant, but when you look at specifically the culverts that are impacted downstream of that, including their own driveway culvert, it appears that that is surcharged in uh, a storm event that's more frequent than I think we'd like to see. And so we're starting kind of in that negative aspect, and then you're adding flows to that. So I just wanted to look at some more specific modeling, and that was sort of my comments is really working <coughs> with the applicant to get through what we would need to feel comfortable with that. And not only looking at their driveway culvert, which is the 15 inch, but then that actually crosses um, two roadways in series with 12 inch culverts below that. So, and how that impacts it. So it's not as simple as just saying, I'm gonna 
rip up the culvert and put a bigger one in because it has impact downstream. So I just want to make sure that we understand what that total impact is. So I think um, there's some more back and forth that has to happen as far as stormwater goes. Okay, I'll turn it over to the applicant now. You state your name for us? Yeah, thank you. My name is Paul Gabors. I prepared the plan that you see in front of you this evening. Um, I have no problems with any of the comments that Andrew brought up or Wooden Kern brought up. Um, I guess the biggest concern would be that I'll just meet with Angela and discuss the condition of Manton Living Road. I guess that would probably be my biggest concern. Is, that, is it not working correctly? I may just be me. Uh, Give it a quick tap if you wouldn't mind. I will. Oh. It's working. It's me. Thank you. It's not working very well, though. Well, um, excuse me. Neither am I. So I think that would be our biggest concern is uh, actually what impacts uh, um, or what changes I think Angela feels that should be made to Manson Libby Road. Um, so maybe we could certainly meet on that. As far as stormwater, um, I do realize that these two 12 inch covers are definitely slow and full during the 25 year storm event. Uh, Woody McCurran brought up, I didn't use appropriate uh, runoff rainfall events. I was using York County, Cummings County, actually the rainfall events are a little bit lower. 25 year storm, so my uh, my rainfall events are a little bit more conservative, but they still uh, are running full. Um, certainly, we can work our hands on that to figure out what would be the best alternative to that. Again, it was a 2% increase in flows, but obviously, those covers are running full. I mean, we certainly could provide more storage capacity. This is not wetland in this area, so we could provide more storage capacity if that's something that would be the best solution to the problem. Um, the applicant is a uh, we're going to do pretty much whatever the city uh, town says that they uh, uh, want, to, want us to do for this particular project, except I'm assuming not repave the entire Mansion Living Road. So I'm sure that the limit is to how far they want to go with the project. Um, uh, there's a couple of things the fire department uh, talked about the connectivity of these buildings. I think we're only talking about 3,700 square feet, so I don't believe that's a concern, but certainly we will talk to the fire department as far as that's concerned. I thought it was like 5,000 square feet triggered it, but I'm not really sure. Somewhere five or 7,500. Right, so we're only at 3,700 square feet as far as total area for both of those buildings. Um, again, uh, I didn't have any issues with the, the comments. I do realize that we had more landscaping. I did talk to Bill and, and we talked about putting some landscaping near the parking area, but um, certainly we, there was supposed to be landscaping uh, buffering this building. I don't think that's been in place. So we will come back and revise landscape plan, taking Angela's comments into consideration and Jane's comments into consideration prior to coming back to the meeting. But I think the most important thing is uh, um, what do we need to do, how can we work with the town to satisfy Angela's comments as far as the Mansion Living Road. And I'd be glad to answer any questions the board may <coughs> have. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Susan? Okay. Um, I'm going to start backwards and go forward. Um, I'm looking at the staff comments from March 13th. And um, you, you are requesting a waiver for presenting a landscaping plan. Is that what you just addressed? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Fielding. Such a thank you. Okay, okay. Um, let's go to somebody else. All right. <laughs> and come back to me. Rachel. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the comments as well uh, about the one on snow storage that's not been identified. Is that what you were talking about um, between uh, closer to the intersection of Manson Libby and Washington? Is that what you're thinking to a snow storage? Or? You know, speaking to the applicant, I know, I know Angela doesn't feel very strong in, you know, in so the DEP about to actually plowing snow into a wetland. Um, so, and obviously Angela's, Angela's comments was to actually maybe put some stone and or rocks to prevent that from happening. Um, <coughs> and talking with the client, obviously if he's not pushing into the wetlands, he's hauling it off the, off the site. So um, he suggested that he actually haul it from here and store it here. But I'm not really sure how he's going to get it here because, you know, we've got a drain ditch both along Manson River Road and drainage ditch, you know, or Jake the parking lot. So, um, you know, snow storage is a problem. You know, our original intention was, yeah, we were going to plow snow and, you know, store it, I guess, on the upland area that we're creating or in the uh, 
fill section of the of the uh, project. But certainly we'll uh, work again with Andrew on that and make that part of our uh, next submission as far as how we're going to do with snow. And as far as the dumpster, uh, it's just going to be moved over to this location adjacent to the existing garage. I will show that also. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. Yeah, I, as long as Angela is satisfied with the runoff, um, I don't see anything else in here that I need to discuss. Thank you. Susan, are you, well, you need a moment? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm looking at the right paper. That's a good thing. Um, I'm looking at um, the March 13th uh, <coughs> site plan review town of Scarborough memorandum number four. Due to the proximity of the large wetland system, the applicant should consider placing low density vegetation. Yes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so you say you agree, and that is something that you will take care of. That's something we'll be looking into when we come back with the landscape. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I must admit that stormwater management is not my thing, so I'm just pass it all over to Angela. The snow storage is all taken care of. I don't really have any problems with this. I'm just I'm I'm, I'm a little curious about number nine, which is. Manson Libby Road is a public road in need of repair. You know that. It's been observed that trucks and so on and so on. So we're going to discuss this partnership with the applicant in order to work with the DPW in reviewing the need for repairs to the roadway. Can I have a little clarification on how that's going to work? I can speak to that. Um, I, I have had a conversation with Mike Shaw uh, about this specifically. And some of the concerns that have come up in the complaints that they have got is where the truck's turning out of the site, and it's a very narrow road. Yeah, I don't buy it, and it is. And so um, there has been complaints um, about the shoulder and really kind of tearing it up as they're doing that turn. And it's not a well-built road to start with. So um, there has been some damage done, just the tight, I think, turning radius to get out of that site. But I also wanted to point out that they're not the only ones using that road. So it really comes down to, I'm not expecting, and neither is public work, that they're redoing all of Manson Libby. I think it's a partnership that we need to look at. And if that means that what should have been another certain footage, like five feet wider for the trucks to get there, and there is a dollar amount you could put towards what that shoulder would cost, instead of them doing it, I think it could easily be done as part of a larger project that public But that could somehow be written into, you know, the, the, what I'm interested in is the part that says um, uh, partnership. So somehow or another that can be included in the, the plan that's coming up in front of us. And we've done that similarly on other site plans that okay. have come up, um, okay. where instead of them doing little pieces and we end up with a patchwork in the road, um, it's, it's actually an advantage to the applicant at times okay. to say, if we give, you know, towards this much towards a larger project, it's a lot of, that's actually a cost saving. So we're actually talking about paying a fee? Well, I guess I'm, I'm not going to say that, but <laughs> no, no, I'd like no, no, to no. discuss that yeah. and what, what we come out with as a partnership and okay. what makes sense for both the applicant and the town. I trust that that will be somehow worked out. That's good. And I appreciate that being brought to our attention because I would never have known if it hadn't come to you. Um, Suppose parking spaces, we discuss that. The applicant should be prepared to identify the intended use of the proposed parking spaces. Oh, that's just going to be the store or his propane uh, trucks. The delivery trucks. So they're like a 28 foot long truck. Um, it just needs more parking. We've got parking here and here, but I guess the business is growing, so we're going to want to park additional vehicles. That was excellent, and I think just the one thing that Warren Kern sort of chimed in on is just to be sure that it's adequate for that type of yep. movement. So maybe just oh, a, a, a turning radius plot that one of the plans would be helpful just to pick how that'll work. But of course. Landscaping. Yep. We knew it, right? 
Landscaping, buffering, and green space. Uh, the board sought enhancement back in 213 for enhanced landscaping along the back of the building. To be consistent, we would recommend that varied vegetation in the multi layered rows be established on the back side of the existing building. No problem? No. I like that. He just says no problem. It makes me very happy. <laughs> very glad to be landscaping. Oh, I'm glad that you're glad. I don't think I have, um, oh, the outdoor storage, have we discussed that? The dumpster. The dumpster being relocated, we did discuss that. Okay, I'm set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, so, uh, just to clear up a couple, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, before I chime in, uh, this is an item that uh, does allow for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to speak uh, on this item, please step forward. Seeing none, I will close public comment. Um, so, just to clear up a couple things here, uh, you did have a waiver request in, included here for a traffic study. Um, I believe that's a very reasonable request. I would, I would personally say that uh, I would be fine with granting the waiver. Does anyone disagree with that? No. Okay, good. So I think you're all set on that one. Um, there is, a, I guess, um, some question as to whether or not, uh, I guess you have a, uh, kind of a you connected two buildings, and there's a Correct. question as to the square footage. Yeah, the square footage came out to, I think, 3,700 square feet, which I believe is going to be below what's considered uh, necessary for a sprinkler system, but I'll leave that to the chief. I'll just come up with the 3,500 bucks, 3,750 square feet is the combined area. Okay, uh -huh. so you're, you're aware of the requirement, you're going to work through that. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then... Lighting. I have a question here about lighting. The applicant stated he wasn't going to have lighting, but uh, really he needs lighting. I talked to him earlier today. Uh, he has no problem adding lighting to the okay. first employees. All right. Outside of that, um, do you, you know, I'm going to ask this of pretty much everyone here. Do you see anything else here that is causing you uh, concern that you nope. might not be able to resolve uh, for your next? No, nope, not, not now. No. <coughs> Staff, are we? Satisfied that we'll probably get to a good agreement here at some point. <laughs> Work through some issues. You good? Any un unresolved questions? No? Okay. And thank you guys. Um, good luck, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Susan, for watching. <laughs> Yep, the uh, next item tonight is Hugo Properties LLC Site Plan Review for 15 Washington Avenue, Assessor's Map R62, Lot 13. Turn it over to Jay for reaching up. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a, an application for, as you just said, a site plan amendment at 15 Washington Ave. This is uh, in the industrial district and um, actually in the... Um, in the industrial district and the applicant is seeking a site plan amendment to the site currently has one industrial building on it. The applicant is seeking a second 12,000 square foot building that will have um, is proposed for multiple tenants um, within the industrial district. So um, just a couple of things. Uh, let's see. So you will have received comments from staff as well as Warner and Kern and Bill Bray, Traffic Solutions. A um, couple of things that staff highlights from staff comments just around really understanding the DP permitting process for this lot. The site was created as part of the overall um, industrial um, uh, district subdivision and each lot had a certain amount of wetlands fill and disturbance area that was allowed and so we want to just be sure we understand what that original allowance was for what the proposed condition will bring it up to and how the DEP review conversations have gone to date. Um, so it's really about understanding the uh, total disturbance of the existing and proposed conditions. Um, we also highlighted questions regarding the town's parking standards. Um, the applicant has suggested they've applied the uh, industrial parking, uh, typical I'll call it, industrial parking standards 
to the totality of both buildings, which is really around warehousing and storage, which requires two parking spaces per thousand. Standards also suggest that when there's office space or other type of space that you need to apply those parking standards, which are typically four per thousand. Um, and so in other applications, existing sites where there are these sort of multiple tenants, typically what we'll see is that there is some allowance for some small office space in there. So just want to be sure that um, you know, when future tenants come to fit up these units that they can get some office space in them um, if that's going to be desired or if they're not going to allow it any, then so be it. Um, but just a little more understanding around that. Um, you know, we have some other comments around lighting and landscaping, um, but I know, again, I think this is one which I think I'll turn over to Angela because sort of a large part of our comments really sort of uh, fall into her wheelhouse more than mine, so um, I'm not sure if she has anything to offer at this point, but. Um, I guess I'll just add that um, part of our comments was looking at what opportunities there were for, for water quality treatment on the site, and I know um, looking at it, and the roof in the back and the drip edge associated with that, which leaves all of the rest of the impervious surfaces on the site, which is the actual road, parking and drive access. And I know it's tight with um, the wetlands um, surrounding and things like that, so I just kind of want to clear, I guess, picture back from the applicant on what has been looked at and why it, we can't do more um, on that site. And then the other thing that was um, woven through not only our comments but what an occurrence was the operation and maintenance plan associated with um, the BMP cycle on site. So. Thank you. All right. I'll turn it over to the applicant here. If you could just state your name and let us know what you have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Bushy with Stantec here representing uh, Ugo Properties. Also with me is uh, Haro Jackal of uh, the owner of uh, uh, Ugo Properties as well as the president of the company that is in the existing building here off of Washington Avenue, Pantum, Pantum Wood Products. And uh, certainly I have asked if you folks have any, any good questions about his business and what he does there, uh, I'll offer that. Pantum Wood Products uh, works out of that building anywhere from eight to ten employees uh, and they fabricate uh, wood flooring samples. Uh, as best as I can explain it. Uh, and their uh, business area brings them across the country uh, selling their their products and so forth. Uh, so it's a, it's a small building, 6,400 square foot existing building uh, with a, a few employees and so forth. It's not a uh, sales or retail operation at all out of that location. Um, so uh, the owner is looking to construct a 12,000 square foot building. It's going to have eight units in it, 1,500 square feet apiece. He's actually looking to uh, take up probably a couple of units himself because he's just run out of some space in his existing uh, building. And then the other spaces would be dedicated to uh, uh, subcontractor types, uh, plumbers, electrician, uh, home builders, uh, certainly folks who are in the same line of business, so to speak, as Mr. Uh, Jackal with, uh, you know, the wood flooring business. So there is a demand and he's got, uh, you know, people who he does work with who have an interest in having a small space. Uh, so we're talking, you know, one or two people uh, working and they go up to their, their space perhaps in the morning, uh, pick up some supplies, but then they're off site for the bulk of the time because they're doing their work at wherever. So. That's the, the whole purpose of uh, the building and uh, what they're trying to accomplish. The aerial that I have here just gives you a sense of uh, location and the uh, property that they own, a little over a four acre piece as Jay had outlined, it is part of the original industrial park subdivision. We've got uh, public works here down on the end of Washington, the uh, go-kart uh, places over in this location, direct mail of Maine and their operations closer up towards uh, Lincoln Street. So the existing building accessed off a single driveway. There's a little parking lot in front of it and then a little parking area off to the left side. And predominantly the rest of the site is, uh, you know, heavily vegetated with a lot of wetland area over those four acres. So to uh, Jay's comment, 
specifically about the DEP permitting and so forth. We have submitted a, uh, a NERPA permit with the DEP, and to the staff's question about the history on that, I'm still looking into that. Um, I can tell you that I uh, got a copy of the original 1999 site plan that was done and submitted to the town. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have any wetlands on it, uh, which surprised me a little bit. So uh, I'm still digging uh, to find out the background. Uh, we've submitted an application as a Tier 1 application because our wetland impacts. We purposely uh, designed the site and the building size to keep our wetland impacts down below 15,000 square feet so we would qualify for a Tier 1 uh, permit review. Uh, to the best of my understanding currently as well, and I need to ask some different people I think at the department, but uh, the department didn't have any record of any past DEP permit. That's not, I'm not saying yet that I've uh, uh, determined fully that that is the case, but thus far nobody was able to turn up a, a, a permit. Uh, I was interested in staff's uh, take on what they found here in your own records about 0.8 acre uh, impact was previously uh, allocated, let's say, to that to that property. So that's good, I think, in that regard, but I, I want to dig into that more and we'll plan to do so in a subsequent submission uh, as far as addressing both the staff comments and the Woodard and Kern comments. So that's kind of where we stand right now on, on the wetland piece. Uh, as I said, purposely, the layout of the site uh, has been done to keep us in that tier one level under 15,000 square feet because that's a, an important threshold piece. You get above that more commonly, it may start triggering thresholds for uh, compensation and mitigation and so forth. So we're hopeful that the uh, department will see fit as a tier one application to just you know allow this to, to move forward. Uh, but I have not yet had any feedback yet from the department. It's still just in their processing phase. So. Uh, we've got to work through that piece of it, but wanted to just give you some sense of the location of the of the site and what we're trying to achieve there. So on the site plan, as I said, we've got a 60 by 200 foot building with eight units, and we've positioned it here. Uh, we did a number of different layouts, and frankly, this came this particular layout was the one that ended up with the. Uh, least amount of wetland impact for that 12,000 square foot uh, building area. So it takes advantage of the fact that there is a parking area more or less in this area just to the left side of the building. So uh, that's basically a conversion of some pavement to a, a building space. We're going to take advantage also of the existing uh, paved drive that comes into the site. But then we are expanding for the parking pieces out here into this upland area as best we can. And so uh, I know Angela had just mentioned on the stormwater side of things, our primary uh, tactic right now is to use a drip edge filter in the back of the building. It's a uh, roughly 22 foot tall e pipe on uh, the top uh, or front of the building and that'll pitch to the back and has a 60 foot depth that uh, then uh, will work pretty well with this drip edge piece, which is a uh, BMP outlined in the Chapter 500 regulations and so forth. I know there has been a comment in regards to our design detail on that, and we'll provide some further information about what we're trying to achieve there. That detail has been one that I've used in the past and, and gotten approval. It's got a couple of unique things. We provide a little extra uh, thick layer of crushed stone uh, for the storage of the water coming off of the roof edge. But because that's a two foot edge or two foot thick edge of crushed stone, it doesn't provide a, a great deal of uh, benefit on the uh, frost protection to our footing. So that's why our detail shows a, a layer of um, uh, insulation over our footing depth. So need to work out a few of those descriptions, I suppose, with staff and maybe if we have a back and forth on that, that that's fine, we'll go through that. They say I, I have used that successfully and it's been accepted by the department folks in the past, but we can talk about that and move forward on that. But having heard also staff comment about, uh, and Angela just saying, the, the need perhaps to provide a little bit more on the water quality uh, side of things. And in particular, we've got this new pavement surface area in here. The front of the site generally has existing pavement. There's existing pavement to this side of the existing building. There's existing pavement out front, although we are expanding it for uh, a few parking spaces. What I was thinking, uh, having now seen the staff comment about that, was the, the potential, and this is a, a tougher site because it's kind of flat out there, 
but what could we do? We, we have a culvert underneath the driveway today, and can I do something with the, the front edge of this existing parking lot here to try to gain some, some treatment? Uh, I'm going to look at that, maybe if it's a P-stone type filter or some type of filtering piece. I don't have a lot of uh, depth or vertical to work with once I get water through a filter. It's, I still need to get it out to the culvert along the street. And similarly, I have some upland area up in here and uh, just looking at the potential of maybe adjusting my grades a little bit here uh, so that I can get water to drain off to the edges here with this green area, which is upland area, and maybe I can put a little small rain garden or something like that. And I think I can make the, the grades work well enough to allow that to get some treatment. So in that case, I'd be treating all of the, the building areas, certainly. I'd be treating, uh, I hope, what will be a majority of the, the new pavement area, perhaps some existing pavement area out in front here with uh, some treatment pieces that, one, won't uh, involve uh, an excessive amount of, of work. Certainly, I, I need to avoid the wetland impacts as much as I can as well. So I need to be sensitive to that, but we'll work on that and, and provide a reply back to uh, staff in regards to maybe beefing up that stormwater piece to a certain extent. Uh, the one benefit of the uh, drip strip out in the back, as I said, is that it will collect a fair amount of water off of the, the roof, and that is also allowing us to achieve some amount of that flood control piece that's going to have a pipe system underneath it, ultimately that pipe will drain out through uh, the side of the property down to the low corner of the property. Ultimately the ditches along Washington generally uh, come together in this location just on the corner and then there's a existing culvert that goes underneath the Washington out towards Public Works and then out below. So. Um, if I can provide a little bit more of the water quality pieces, hopefully those will just get us. We only had one issue, I think, on a two-year storm event for flood control, and I, maybe I can mitigate that uh, with just a little bit more effort on the water quality pieces for, for the storm water. The site, having an existing building benefits from the existing utilities. We have a sewer line that comes out the existing building, goes out into the road, and we were simply looking to tie into that line. We have uh, water that's out in Washington today. There's just a domestic service into the existing building, but the new building will require a sprinkler system, so we'll put in uh, certainly the uh, fire and domestic service lines to the building, uh, and then we'll have an underground feed for power and communications. Uh, to the side of the building. So again, eight different units, not sure which unit in particular that the uh, owner applicant here uh, may be looking to uh, take over themselves. Uh, each of these units, as you will see on the Biscuit plans, basically have a entry door, man door, as well as an overhead at grade, overhead door. So, you know, the carpenter, the con subcontractor, whomever has a place to be able to back up his truck and, you know, unload some stuff and put it into his, uh, his space. Again, these are each 1,500 square feet. So, a um, couple of questions on the landscaping and what I've offered at least here graphically. There are some existing uh, relatively, you know, well-established oak trees. Uh, along the front of the property that I think function pretty well, plus there's a few trees and shrubs along the front of the existing building. So frankly, we hadn't really done all that much relative to the landscaping, uh, but having heard staff comment, perhaps it is something that uh, we could take a look at if there's, you know, given the, the orientation of this building perpendicular to Washington, and we know in this front area here, if you go out there today, you'll find that it's, you know, it's a pretty thick, dense, uh, coverage and it's got a lot of the Phragmites, unfortunately, but uh, it, it's, like I say, pretty thick and, and dense. So the opportunity to do a little bit more on landscaping, again, I wouldn't want to do anything with the, the tree coverage out in front. Those are nice trees, nice oak trees. So um, I guess we'll have to look a little bit and, and if there's any opportunity, particularly if we do the, some rain gardens, there would be the introduction of some landscaping, but those are rain gardens, you know, low areas, um, you know, not sure we can provide a whole heck of a lot or, or desire to provide a whole heck of a lot more. The whole back area here, this is all just, you know, mature woods, so can't really see much from surrounding properties or otherwise. So I'll, list, I'll take guidance from, from uh, the board if you've got some thoughts or comments about that, and we'll see what we can potentially do on that side of things. So. 
That is uh, generally the, uh, the the project. Uh, I'll note, you know, Mr. Bray has done his traffic counts and given this type of building. And to Jay's comments about the parking piece, I think we need to give you a little bit more information. We've certainly come with what we thought was an adequate parking amount, and uh, now knowing as well that the uh, applicant is looking to take a couple of spaces, I think I need to explain that <coughs> a little bit, and that may be something that helps us relative to the overall count. He just needs space, and that's not necessarily going to put an additional demand side to some of the parking, but we had tried to meet that uh, two per thousand square foot for you know the two buildings. Uh, let me go back and figure out if we're going to have <coughs> a couple hundred square feet of office in each of the spaces, what that might mean relative to the parking ratio, and, and then come back to you folks with uh, what that number is. We may end up coming back with a waiver because, frankly, I'd prefer not to necessarily build any additional parking beyond what we have if we can help it uh, because it would probably entail potential to have to have some wetland impact, and I want to avoid the wetland impact if I could. So uh, we'll do the numbers a little bit more closely and see how it plays out and respond back to staff uh, on that side of things. So, uh, But Mr. Bray had made comments in regards to the trip generation. It's pretty low uh, given this type of use and so forth. So we don't believe that there's any particular issues at this site relative to Washington and uh, traffic getting out to Route 1 and so forth. So it seems as though this building and these uses were all what were contemplated 25 years ago with the development of the <coughs> Park, so uh, seems like a good thing. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, Robin, it's okay. Sure. Um, so you know, you identified um, two potential locations Sorry. for the additional stormwater. Let me um, this is, <laughs> I know, but, uh, this is an opportunity for public comment. And I'd like to open up the floor to public comment. If there's anyone here that'd like to speak on this issue? Seeing none, I will close public comment and let Robin continue. I okay. <laughs> so, Steve, you're saying that there, you identified at least two additional locations for the additional stormwater that, that Angela was asking for. And one being where the trees are, which we, I think we're all in agreement that. If there's probably eight to 10 feet between the pavement edge, existing pavement edge, and then those trees. So my issue over in that spot is just I don't have a lot of vertical, so the use of like a P-stone filter, it's say two or three foot wide, you know, I, I still need to be able to get that water to then come out into the ditch. What about on the other side of the driveway? Right in here? Yeah. Well, I've got a wetland line right in there, so I'm a little tight, you know, but maybe I could fit something pretty narrow, but... Okay. You can see the wetland line. Okay, yeah. And the other one was in the rear of the property? Yeah, there's a, the green is representative of the upland area. So I need to rework how this wants to grade, but I have a little upland area in there, and then I have an upland finger over in here. So if I can get water to drain off into those two spots, again, uh, I think what I'd end up doing, if I did a little rain garden with an under drain underneath it, I could tie it back into my foundation drain easily enough, and my foundation drain is deep enough because that ultimately makes its way all the way down to the true low spot down in the corner here with a, you know, 8-inch. What, kind of, what kind of type of vertical differential are you talking about there? Uh, well, From up there through here to, your foundation drain. to the foundation drain, about 4 feet. Okay. So I think I can probably make yeah. something work there. Yeah. Um, there's always underground. Well, soils conditions <laughs> out here are going to be really tough, um, no, um, unfortunately. What about snow storage? Where are you going to put snow storage then? I mean, I mean well, it's equally tight. Yeah, the uh, thought had been that we'd be pushing off to the edges here or pushing just a straight, straight push all the way out to the edge. So i got to think about that a little bit as to okay. how I position a little rain garden or something and the ability yeah. to put snow up to it. So you were not able to find out what the historical wetland infill has been over the past? Not yet. Like you say, I, I found the original drawing and yeah. uh, disappointed me that it didn't even have any wetlands yeah. on it. And that was in 1999. So I know you're talking Tier 1 NERPA, but what about the Army Corps? Are you just doing the self? Verification. Are yeah, the, the okay. submission has gone into both, okay. and we're just, just hopeful that they'll uh, fall into play as the tier one gets reviewed. If they fall into the general permit. Okay. And so I'm just wondering how, if if uh, 
you do trigger that 15,000 based on past impacts. Right. So that could change a lot. I right. Think. Okay. All right. So you've got that in the back of your mind. Yeah. Excellent. Um, um, <laughs> I guess um, quick question on um, I don't know. There's there's a lot of comments here, but I I'm I, I'm assuming that you'll work with staff on resolving those. Deals. A few of them were uh, certainly on both sides, staff and Woodard Kern, about the operation maintenance manual. And I apologize. Uh, it seems as though we didn't actually do that particular document. And I know relative to getting the stormwater maintenance agreement in place with the town and having the operations. So my next submission will have okay. that. So it's fourth standard. Time. All right. Um, how about the main, the landscape plan? Well, like I say, I'm looking maybe for a little bit of feedback, having explained what's out there, and, and gosh, it'd uh, be one thing if there weren't any trees out front, then I'd have some opportunity to do something for you, but, Jesus, pretty good trees and coverage out front uh, already, and I don't, I don't see the need to try to do any more uh, there. Well, if they're well established, then they're giving you some good stormwater sort of control. Oh, yeah, they're, they're nice trees. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Lighting fixture, um, there's something on here that they weren't going to be full cut off. Is that getting reconsidered? Yeah, as I understand it, and I saw the staff comment, i got to look at that uh, okay. catalog cut that we provided. I think that fixture actually does allow for a full cut off. Okay. So it probably just needs a modification or I need to represent the uh, right. I know that the contractor was understanding and is looking to do the cutoff, the full cutoff fixture style. So what I provided for a catalog may have been a little confusing. As I think that's why the question came up, because yeah. there, there is a version that's full cutoff and right. it's private. It's not. Right. Okay. Super. And then um, regarding parking standards, I get you got, you got tight considerations there given the, the geography and, and things like that. But um, if, if we're going to spare anything or waive anything, I'd be, you know, I'd just be tending to, if you can get more stormwater treatment out there, and if it's either that or parking, I'd obviously be for stormwater treatment. So. I'm done. Thank you. Yeah, that meant a couple of spaces got lost, <laughs> right. and I could trade it off. So I could probably do that. Some options. Thank you, Rob. I'm all set. Thanks. Rick. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. Is the intent? I'm not clear on the intent of the space, which kind of plays into the parking space and stuff. I mean, is it is it truly warehouse space, or is it undefined right now? Um, what what kind of uh, what kind of power do you have? Uh, I think they're going to have a phase? 400 amp panel, single the phase. The whole thing. Yeah. 400 amp. Excuse me. If you yeah. Could come You'll need to come podium and say hello. This is the the building. Person for the applicant. Hard to involve. Don't worry. I just know. <laughs> Hi. Uh, this one. Yeah. Hi. I'm Yosef Nilo. Uh, I'm a general contractor in South Portland, and I actually work with my friend Haro, who is the uh, developer, I suppose. Uh, so we were looking at, like, what I understand that the Biscup construction proposal that we're working with right now has a 400 amp uh, service going to eight different 100 amp services per unit, essentially. So a small uh, subcontractor <coughs> could do whatever they need to do there. Yeah. Not 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 big construction or anything. Okay. So it's basically each unit has a 100 amp panel. 100 amp panel, yes. No three phase. Nope, no, no. Um, okay, so it's either like light commercial use or, or truly just warehouse space. Yes. Okay. Yep. For me, for me in particular, because. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, before you speak, could I just ask the. Uh, uh, the Sorry. gentleman in the middle. Could you just spell your last name for me, please? Van Mierlo. V A N M I E R L O. Thank you. Got it. And uh, so currently I have warehouse space that I rent in Gorm, on the line of Gorm, Scarborough, not Scarborough, Westbrook, Gorm, Westbrook area. And so I want to consolidate you know, whatever I store over there. Uh, I have the storage already. I need the storage, but it's inefficient for me to drive back and forth and, and uh, play things. So for me, 
at least two units, if not three units, will be used for storage, pure storage, yeah, which I already need, you know, to, to just to bring in materials to, to keep production rolling uh, in, in the existing building. Uh, I, probably one unit I will use as a photo studio, you know, and uh, I need a space where I can lay out floors and photograph them for marketing purposes, so that kind of Right now we have a flexible space that we do, but it's inefficient to constantly clean out that room and turn it into a photo studio, so I want to have a dedicated space for it. So that, those are the needs to basically um, keep my company viable and active in the marketplace. And the other units are basically then to be rented out for other small contractors. I, you didn't, there's no elevation, right? Are these that I, that I saw, maybe I missed it, but are these, I'm just trying to envision what it looks like. Is it, is it m m metal garage doors, an all metal building, no windows? Uh, excuse me, sir, before you leave the podium, could you just state your name for the record for us? My name? Yes. Okay. Haro uh, Yekel. So H A H A R R O, first name, last name Yekel, J A K E L. Thank you. <laughs> No easy names for you, don't I? <laughs> uh, so the building plan from uh, Biscop Construction shows uh, we provided the elevations. Hopefully, have that in, in your packet. I, so I must have missed this. Sorry, I, missed this. I have it up on the screen as well. Oh, oh, there you go. Thank you. Oh, I did miss it. It's the last page. I guess I just didn't go far enough. All right. So it's a prefabricated metal building, uh, pretty standard for the industrial park. Um, they say front to back pitch, metal siding, overhead doors, man doors, few windows as you can see, a uh, few windows in the uh, overheads, provide a little natural light into the building. A few windows in the back I see and then on the sides just the metal. Yeah. That looks fun. Are those um, 12 foot, 14 foot doors, probably? 10 by 12. 10 by 12. Okay. All right, yeah, I just was curious as to the actual use. I think you did a good job of promoting it, so thank you. I'm done. Right. Yeah, I, I guess I have a couple of questions. One is, I'm looking at this, is, is this building heated? Yes. Okay, and I, I guess I didn't see. Uh, what is the heating? Eight, eight individual gas. You get to step up. Oh, that I should specify. There is natural gas out in the street, so that natural gas will come into the building and uh, serve those heating units. So, so the individual unit heater for each of the spaces. Okay. Um. I'm, I'm very intrigued by the, the concept of bringing a whole bunch of contractors and subcontractors together um, along in the same profession. I think that's a it's, uh, it, it's efficient and I think it's, it could be energizing for your, for your business. So compliment you on that. Uh, I do have a question as I look at the parking. I believe I did count 29 spaces. Um, is the turning radius enough, especially where you have the wood guide rail? Uh, are uh, vans and our larger vans going to be able to turn and back in? Well, we do have a 24 foot wide aisle, and in fact, that was a point made, I believe, in the staff comments about the access width. I think the standard actually in Scarborough is 25 feet, and we have it drawn as 24. Uh, I guess just because it's helpful and that small amount of minimization to the wetland piece, I'd ask for uh, consideration on a, on a waiver to go to the 24, and the 24 will allow for adequate turning uh, into those spaces. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, all right, so uh, just to highlight, I'm glad you just brought that up because that was one of the items. Uh, I am okay with the waiver to the 24-foot uh, aisles uh, from the 25 anyone has an issue with that. Okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, also there was a need for uh, an ADA accessible space 
I'm going to have to provide another one, so I'll I'll find a space um, for that. You know, I, as I you know as I look at this and and kind of better understand the concept of what you're trying to do here, um, you know, I I certainly understand staff's perspective on the parking um, spaces in mounts that you know would be required if the office uses a certain amount. Um, I also look at it from the perspective of what is its use most likely to be, and I'm you know. If you start, if you're starting to get into the wetlands, um, you know, just to meet what we we deem that might be necessary, I'm not sure that's the best case in this scenario. Where you're sitting at, what you're looking at for proposed use, I'm not sure expanding the number of parking spots here, unless you could do it with some relative ease and maybe not impede upon some of the wetlands that are around. I'm not sure you're going to see the benefit we would like to see out of it. So. Um, I think when you go back to staff and work through it, you know, if you squeezed in a spot here, you know, fantastic. If, if for whatever reason, the wetlands are, you know, you're getting to more wetland space, you know, what you proposed is probably, from the sounds of it, probably adequate enough for the time being. Um, I think staff has some other thoughts that they'd share with you, but I trust that you guys will probably be able to work that aspect of that. And that's my general sentiment. I, I suspect, and stop me if I'm wrong, board, but probably the general sentiment of the board as well. Is, you know, I think I think what you're proposing, um, as far as the number of spots go, is is probably going to be adequate at the end of the day. So um, that helps at all. Uh, as far as the landscaping, it was helpful to hear you discuss kind of what's on site, um, and really where your availability is to plant or lack thereof in this case. Um, I, I think the town is right to point out though, try to See if you can do a little something, you know, the best you can. Um, but clearly, we're not going to have you remove wetlands to put a couple trees in. So, again, it's all a balancing act, right? For the record, as Ms. Oglis is not here, I'll say <laughs> I'll work on it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody had to step in. Um, let's see. And then I think there's a couple notes in here about, um, you know, you had a waiver request on some uh, full flood measurements, and I think the town has rightfully requested and Woodward and Current too. Some extra information will pour, like a waiver would be granted in that case. So, trust that you'd be providing that information to them as well. Um, and then, I'm not sure if we got to it. I think we started to circle it a little bit, but the mechanical equipment. You're not expecting any mechanical equipment that would that would require a pad. To the best of my knowledge, right now, currently no, other than the transformer pad. And there's a question here about a dumpster pad. Um, that was a good point, and I need to talk to the uh, owner here and find out where a best spot would be for okay. that. So I'm not prepared to necessarily offer that yet until I talk with them. Okay. Well, in this case, um, I guess we'll wait for more information. Look forward to the next uh, round. And We're hopeful that in uh, expecting that we'll have our DEP permit uh, the next time we come before you folks so that hopefully we'd be able to have an action taken that night. Fantastic. Great. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. And next item on the agenda is uh, Merle, Hartford, Merle Hartford Painting LLC requests final subdivision approval for 93 Running Hill Road, Assessor's Map R35, Lot 18. And Jay, if you could give us a little primer on this one, please. Uh, sure. Uh, this is a subdivision on a piece of property that's at the intersection of Running Hill Road and New Road. Um, planning board members may recall this item from the fall when it received a preliminary application, uh, preliminary approval, I should say, back in November. Um, the site is in the R Running Hill Road Transition District, RH2 District, as well as the Office for Protection Overlay District. Um, I think one of the bigger items we talked about last time was really uh, understanding the, the nitrate plume analysis. I know the board members want to see that, and that has been provided at this time. Um, so, uh, again, um, where it has received preliminary approval, it'll be for you for final review. Um, and so you have received comments from staff. Um, and I think sort of the, the, the critical issue to talk through tonight is really understanding um, the sort of anticipated uh, use of the site and ensure that we're adi ad adequately uh, appropriating for disturbance on the sites. One of the, the critical triggers 
in understanding, particularly given that the, uh, uh, that's in the Oxford Protection District as well as the Long Creek Watershed, um, is the extent of that disturbance. And the reason I say that is basically if, it, if an acre triggers a certain threshold for stormwater management, or under an acre does it. Um, and so as staff reviewed the plans, um, we just had some questions with regards to be sure that you know, really the plans allow for what would be a typical expectation of a future property owner for use and enjoyment of their property uh, once they develop their house lot. Um, and, and so just want to be sure we work through that uh, carefully. Um, let's see, I guess another question we had had to do with respect to appreciate that the applicant has submitted to IFNW and, and they had some comments, I think it was the IFNW anyway, with regards to a 250 foot setback to an existing wading bird habitat, I believe it was. Um, and just the way that uh, delineation was depicted on the subdivision, we want to be sure that that's, again, accurately reflected because we know those type of areas can, again, down the road be could be problematic for future landowners. And we, we staff flags that particularly because there is a house that was recently developed within that 250 foot setback. We know they were appropriately permitted, so um, they did what they needed to do. And so just a fully understanding and vetting that, that area that's shown on the subdivision plan as a no disturbance buffer and how that's gonna be reflected moving forward. Um, I think those are really the two big items, and, and, and I don't know if Angela, do you want to weigh in at all on sort of the disturbance question, or just chime in as it goes? But I'll turn it to you, or see where we go from there. Yeah, I think you've covered okay. the questions that we have, and I know it's confusing. Yeah, so I think that's all set. Then. Okay, thank you. thank you. All right, and you could just introduce yourself, and sure. Uh, Steve Blake, I'm with VH2M, I'm representing Merle. Um, I think Jay did a pretty good job with the, with the overview, but just real quickly, um, this is a three lot subdivision. On lot one, which is the lot directly on the corner of New Road and Running Hill Road, uh, there's an existing house there now, and it's intended to remain that way. So it's a three lot subdivision with, with two new um, single family houses. Um, the last time we were here, uh, we talked a lot about the nitrate study, which has been done. Uh, this plan reflects the, the, the plumes that would be expected. Um, some of the other things that, that we did to address staff comments um, from the preliminary submission, um, we've shown some uh, suggested d develop, development areas or dis disturbed areas, um, and I know uh, the town staff had, had some questions on that. Um, I guess the one thing I would say is that the, the area that we're showing as disturbed is, is suggested. Um, we would still go through the process during the um, obtaining the building permit with, uh, I guess, a more detailed uh, grading plan. Uh, and the, the disturbance area that we show now is about a half acre. Um, so we're, the way it's shown right now, we're, we're well under that one acre threshold. Um, I did, we did, uh, we reached out to the uh, Long Creek Watershed District as well. Uh, I talked, spoke with Peter this morning and um, he reviewed what we had submitted after his first round of comments and, and he said that he wasn't going to respond. He was, he was satisfied with what we did. Um, <clears throat> so those were kind of the key pieces. Uh, with respect to the, um, the, the comment regarding the inland waterfowl and wading bird habitat, <coughs> we've reached out to IFMW to get some additional clarification on that. I haven't heard back. Um, and the one thing I would say is that the, the DEP has a, has a permit by rule process for development within that, that zone. Um, so there's the buffer that we show is a it's a 250 foot buffer that was suggested by IFNW. Um, if there was ever a need to, and I don't, I don't foresee there to be on this particular parcel, uh, but if there was a need to, it could be permitted with the DEP. It would have to be reviewed by DEP and then they would send it to IFNW. So just as some additional clarification for that. Um, 
other than that, we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, Rachel, do you want to start this one? Uh, Ashley, I don't have any questions. Oh, I want to write back. Oh. <laughs> well, I can dig around and see if I can find something. <laughs> That's fine. I, 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 was, fine. I was looking it over just in case you did that. <laughs> um, I guess I had a question on the actual... Um, I'm, I'm trying to look at the plan and determine where the actual uh, envelope, building envelopes are for the houses. It pretty much, not that it matters that much, I was just kind of curious. I see the 200 foot, um, 50 foot buffer, undisturbed buffer line in there that kind of encroaches on the, on the lot three and really doesn't really affect the other two lots that much. But um, is the, I guess I see the, I guess I see the building envelope, but it's not, as, I guess as long as you stay outside of that 250 foot undisturbed area, you're going to plan on putting that house. I know you kind of laid them out where you think they might go, but um, Angela, does it matter from a watershed point of view? I guess where they where those houses go. Does it? Well, I, I think that was the original comment was to try to give us some idea of how they would grade out those sites because in particular like for this watershed, yeah. Long Creek, um, we really want to know that. And so I guess with a disturbed buffer, and I know, understand you can get a permit by rule, um, it'd really be key to make sure we know where that is, that the homeowners know where that is yeah. because I think someone doing something in their yard or impacting that in some way um, wouldn't necessarily know that that's a thing. Yeah, sure. That's kind of yeah, the main, that's yeah. kind of the main my main point that I was trying to get to is that you show the building envelopes based on the setbacks, but not necessarily based on the um, environmental concerns. Sure. So you might want to like redraw the um, you know just make it clear to the, whoever's going to build there. I'm not sure if we're, if the if the owner's going to. How we, I don't think we've determined what he's what we're going to do exactly with those lots as far as if you're going to sell them or build on them, but. I would try to clarify where that building envelope really is. Sure. It, it, a lot of times, what we do in, in similar situations where there's a, where there's a setback from another resource um, is we'll we'll actually pin those um, and then cap them and say you know this yeah. is a you know 250 foot buffer, no disturbance buffer. Yeah, that would that would be <coughs> nice to me because the inspector is going to go out there and everything and, and look at it. But just in case someone misses something, you never want to have a foundation somewhere where you got to move it. Sure. Um, yeah. Not that that would ever happen, but I've actually could. <laughs> I've worried about it a couple times when I built a few houses. Um, uh, other than that, um, I don't have a whole lot of questions. I saw the reports from the inland fisheries, and it looks like you're in the process of addressing all those concerns. So, um, other than that, I think it's uh, fine. Thank you. Robin? <coughs> so, um, if you were to add up, have, have you gone through the calculations and perhaps this is what you work with Pete Carney on too, if you went through and added up all the impervious area on these lots, does it does it exceed or is it below one acre? It's being roof lines and sure, yeah, it's it's well below one acre. It's well below one yeah. acre. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And the potential limits of disturbance are on here as approximated. Yeah, I would call them suggested at this point. Um, okay. Yep. There's, there's no real like lay down area though, or anything like that, for which which should be on here, which is which I'm not going to get too much, but I guess one of the one of the questions I guess that um, Jay brought up is is that we do need to. Um, site use and the limits of the disturbance kind of thing. So have those have those been all, all been addressed um, to your satisfaction, I guess, because they're looking for approval here. Yeah, and, and maybe I'll ask Angela to chime in too, but I mean one of the as staff sort of looked at the layout and the grading around the houses, it was really about sort of the, the typical expectations that one might have for a uh, house lot development in this neighborhood looking at the surrounding properties and you know the way the the, um, the grading sort of 
indicates is you're sort of going to have a house in the middle of a field, sort of up on a hill. And if that's the intent, then I guess that's the intent, but it's, you know, not sort of consistent with sort of the more traditional, uh, I don't know, level's the right word, but manicured clearing lot that's, you know, sort of from house to street, sort of a, a level grade. And so, Angela, maybe there's, you can chime in with more engineer terms. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I have passed um, out. I think, talking with Steve, obviously we're at, like you said, close to a half acre. And so I think we've done in the past is maybe document that somehow on the plan that you're not going over an acre and that that gets um, what we're talking about is reviewed by myself when a building permit comes in and we can really try to patch on that. Sometimes we don't need these like, conditions of approval. A lot of these sub bullets here that we're talking about, um, specifically um, what you're talking about, Angela, as far as the limits of disturbance, the two sub bullets under the first one, if the area of disturbance is to be limited on each lot, such limitation should be incorporated into the deeds of the property. Um, for town review. I would also um, consider the last sub bullet there um, that the designer will basically mimic the natural triangle of the lot. And then the sub bullet underneath that about a plan note stating that each individual house lot will require a grading and drainage plan to be reviewed and approved by the town engineer. Um, and then I did see two other, at least two others on the back to consider for conditional approval. Number three on the back of staff comments, which is, which is regarding the subdivision plat, um, should include the standards for residential lots related to fuel tanks, fuel trains, and um, waste disposal. And then the two sub bullets at the bottom regarding further due diligence of the IF and W undisturbed buffer. And um, that clarity would be found around that kind of thing. So, that's, I guess that's what I would propose. If you're okay, you know, if you feel like these are going to be staff comments are, are doable, um, that's what I would propose as the standard uh, conditions of approval. Yeah, I, I don't see anything that's not doable. I guess the only question I have is about um, uh, in incorporating anything in into the individual deeds, if, if that's required, or if we just had a, had a note on the plan mm -hmm. um, similar to what what Jay had mentioned about having the having Angela, uh, the, the engineering department review the. So you, you wouldn't want to put anything on the deeds? Um, I'm not saying that we wouldn't. Um, it, it would might just be. Um, where where this is. Aquifer protection and Long Creek Warship Mansion District and a few other things. I, I guess I, I I would lean toward wanting to put it on the D, but I, I'll do it up to the staff. That's all I have is to propose those conditions. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I just have a quick question here. Uh, there's a really faint outline of your disturbed area, and as you pointed out, it's, it's under a half acre, and you're allowed up to an acre before you're triggering anything, correct? Correct. Sure. Yeah. The question would be, well, why limit yourself to the, what you've approximated in here? Why not? Because it looks to me as you can probably capture most of Lot 2 as an area that could be disturbed. Sure. Uh, yeah, like our, break on the threshold. <coughs> yeah our, our intent by doing that, I guess, wasn't to necessarily limit the um, development on the lot, but more to show the, the limited impact that it would that it, that it could have. Okay, so reasonably though, if you're the homeowner, you believe that's the reasonable space that would be disturbed and building and moving a family in. And, I mean, I think I, I think you had an opportunity there to. Yeah. And that area <coughs> sure. I, I guess the, the the other the other aspect of this that um, maybe I didn't explain is I guess when we looked at this the the, the bulk of that property right now while, while it, it might not be you know completely a manicured lawn um, it is it's not you know there are very few trees in the property um, uh, most of it is mowed um, particularly around the existing house um, so I guess when we were thinking in terms of disturbed area. Uh, we were thinking, you know, just what we would need to get the driveway in and build the house, and then kind of the remainder of the lot would, would, you know, essentially kind of remain in the existing state of of lawn, you know, maybe a lawn that's mowed 
a little bit more frequently, but generally remain with the same characteristic. All right, and I have a, a little note here about um, the deed restrictions or annual reporting. Now, my understanding is that one of the others, that correct? It's either you're going to put a, a deed restriction on this, which would um, the 419 trigger for the uh, annual reporting of the effects on the aquifer rate or the overlay protection. Right, yeah, so I, I guess that was sort of staff comment. And if you right. know, the applicants, you know, fine with staying under the acre of total disturbance, and that's fine, um, then, you know, we don't need to worry about, as you just said, the annual reporting okay. deal, but we will want to be sure that it's well documented how much disturbance is allowed on each lot. Um, so when building permits come in or when folks start doing things on the property, I think it's also worth bearing mention that that acre of disturbance really is inclusive of the three lots, so there probably should be some area of disturbance granted to or <laughs> given to the existing lot if they ever want to do an expansion or... Um, so you get into that one acre it pretty quickly if you pretty one, right? Right. Um, but so just just some things to okay. be thinking about down the road. So with that this you know the existing house doesn't get painted into a corner by the other lots doing some work. Um, and then I think there was something in here about a waiver request, stormwater and erosion control, and so the farm is you're okay with it. The grading plan is what I understand, correct? So town still needs to review. Right, that'd be a condition of approval that's on the subdivision note. I think one of the things that, you know, moving forward, um, I know uh, Ms. Saunders was talking about potential conditions of approval. Um, I think there's there's sort of a series of notes that need to be added to the plan um, and sort of working through a number of these issues that I think with the answer we have now, knowing that the disturbance and if everyone's sort of comfortable with the limit of disturbance being under the acre threshold, I think that takes a lot off the table, but there's still sort of a uh, lot of documentation to be done to get the subdivision plan where it needs to be. Because um, I think, again, when a plan gets recorded, you don't necessarily want to show the conceptual um, disturbance areas because that's what's recorded and it can cause a lot of confusion. Um, so I think staff can work with uh, Mr. Blake, you know, probably sit down for an hour and just sort of with red line pencil say, all right, let's organize the plan in this way, that way, and add this note and that note, and probably for the board's next meeting be ready to make potentially for a consent item if board members don't have any other outstanding issues. Um, but just something to consider. Hey guys, would staff be comfortable with that consent item at this stage, and I'm assuming you're going to work out the bulk of these, these details. And my apologies if I jump the gun by proposing conditional oh, approval. We, we've worked at the board. Okay. And if the board is comfortable doing conditional approval, we can we can amend we can we can work with that. Um, okay. But I, you know, it would be I think it would just be a lot cleaner. If there's sort of enough, and it really does. So a consent item for newer L, uh, newer board members. Essentially what it is when there's sort of a host of things to get cleaned up, but everyone's in general agreement with the direction, it allows for the plans to get cleaned up. It's put on the next agenda as a consent item. So really there's no, provided that the plans are all worked out, staff's happy, the applicant's happy, um, you know, it, the board moves, makes a motion right away. It's, you know, there really isn't discussion and, it, you know, staff just says, okay, yep, we reviewed the item, plans are, what we expected, and then there's a motion um, mm -hmm. and it's done. So, uh, but and administratively, do we have a quorum? Tonight, yes. Board okay. members. Okay. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I think uh, I'm comfortable personally letting staff and the applicant work out the the rest of these details. Um, look to the board members here, see if they agree that a consent item would probably be warranted. Our motion. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, I I don't have anything other than that. So why don't I uh, probably need a formal motion, right? Uh, no, no, not necessarily. No, I mean, if the board's comfortable with that, but if you want to, that works for me as well. 
Uh, just we'll, we'll approve it to form the next. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you're happy with that, we'll, we'll throw it on the agenda for consent. And I'm assuming it is working a lot. Next time around. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> All right. Staff report. You have any staff report? Um, so, let's see, I think everyone may have received an email from Mr. Bacon before the meeting. I don't know if he had an opportunity to read it or not, but he is resigning his position here in town. And, and uh, um, so we'll certainly miss him, but he is going to be work still in town for at least uh, another few weeks. And I know he's expressed interest that he'll be at the board's next meeting. Um, so, uh, but I did just want to make sure, make everyone aware. And as I said, he's still around for a few weeks, so he'll be picking up the um, that is all I have to report at this time. Angela, do you have okay. And uh, if we have an administrative amendment report, do not have anything to report. This evening. Right. We have any board, uh, any correspondence? Correspondence this evening. Planning board comments. Anyone here have any additional comments for the evening? Oh, okay. Sorry for jumping the gun. <laughs> <laughs> you were you're all set. Um, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>